It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Richard Campbell are here. And of course, there's a lot to say. Uh, we're only in day four of the hearings uh, uh, on Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, and it has been a blizzard of res revelations. Paul and Richard go through it. We'll talk about the weirdly returning Moment 3 update. We've got some Xbox news, that and a lot more coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Richard Campbell. Episode 835, recorded Wednesday, June 28th, 2023. Sifting mud for nymphs. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Lookout. Whether on a device or in the cloud, your business data is always on the move. Minimize risk, increase visibility, and ensure compliance with Lookout's unified platform. Visit Lookout.com today. And by ACI Learning. IT skills are outdated in about 18 months. Stay ahead of the curve and future-proof your business competitiveness with customizable, entertaining training. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for more information on a free two-week training trial for your team. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show we cover the latest news from Microsoft. And Richard Campbell, he going to Microsoft next uh, next week. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Hey, Richard. Howdy. This is the advantage just, of living in Vancouver. You, you just up the road a, a piece. Two and a half drive. Two and a half hour drive. Oh. Two if I don't care about the ticket. <laughs> Sounds like you got a little choked up when you said Microsoft there. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a week. I mean, I feel I get the same way. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Uh, that's Paul Therott. who <laughs> gets a little emotional when he talks about Microsoft. Microsoft. Unfortunately, that's his job. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. these things happen. Therott.com, runisradio.com. We got the two. We got the best. The best in the biz. Have you been watching this uh, hearing? This Microsoft FTC hearing? What a story there. Oh, boy. I, I you know covering Microsoft as I do for a living and following their quarter results every quarter as I do, I have to say the amount of information we've gotten here it stands in sharp contrast yeah. to what we usually get from this company. <laughs> this is I told um, Lisa last night, I said, don't put it in writing. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, it is astonishing. Like, so I went back and looked. Uh, this isn't in the notes per se. It doesn't really matter. But I just went back and looked. So in the last quarterly earnings report, right, Microsoft had all these vague pronouncements about gaming and Xbox, right? Gaming revenue overall was down 4%. Xbox content and services were down 3%. They've never said what the beginning number was, so we don't know yeah, it's meaningless. where those things are. It's doubled. Um, it means nothing if you don't Xbox know. Xbox hardware revenue was down 30%, yeah. uh, blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. If you, if you look at their post earnings conference call, Microsoft uttered the term, Microsoft executives uttered the term Xbox five times. Uh, some version of gaming 14 times compared to over 50 times for AI, over 40 times for Azure, over 40 times for cloud, and over 20 times for Windows, by the way. Hmm. Um, there's not a lot of information, <laughs> you know. Uh, they said during the conference call that Xbox subscriptions, which is the combination of Xbox Live and all the Game Pass subscriptions, uh, nearly reached $1 billion in the quarter. Not quite, but nearly. So that's almost a $1 billion business, I guess. And that's in, like, a, in a quarter, like in a quarter, $4 billion yeah. business. Okay. Sorry. So that's what they, but that's what they said, right? That was like, that was the, that was nothing. And then we get like one filing in this uh, set of uh, days of hearings. And it's like 118 bits of information that honestly are really interesting. I have to say, um, so it, it's interesting to learn more about this business. And so on that note, yes. I have to thank, I want to thank the FTC. Uh, I mean, I hate you so much, but this has been a fascinating bit of disclosure that we just don't normally see. To be clear, this is the uh, administrative hearing to decide whether this case goes to trial, whether the FTC's case has merit. And so it's mm -hmm. decided by a single judge. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And you could throw it out. He's, He's listening. Out. So they're talking to the judge. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's a lot. There's been a lot of discovery, obviously, and a lot of emails on both sides. Revealed. Lots of redactions. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, that's one um, thing. The judge is letting them hide bi business mm -hmm. information. Yeah. You know, sales information, but, things like that. They are, but yet, honestly, there's so much information that has come out, regardless of that. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
There's been some good hard numbers here. Apple uh, learned this in the Apple Epic lawsuit that nobody wins in a lawsuit like this because of discovery. Yeah, no. Winning yeah. a lawsuit is like winning an earthquake. There's no such thing. Right? <laughs> As so much is revealed, unusually embarrassing because I don't know what it is about executives and email, but they 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 kind of dump on. Uh, I tell you, if email. I do have an earthquake in Mexico City, I would like to to win that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if I could. Hey, I was wondering why that apartment was so cheap. Well, never mind. Yeah, right. I was wondering why it sways when a truck drives by. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, there's so much here. I mean, I, it, I I kind of in the notes just blurted some stuff out. I it's in sort of an order, but I'm I think gonna, the most I'm fascinating. Let you drive because I just you know. It's yeah, just... but I gave you guys a link to a resource at um, GameIndustry.biz that just they're updating it daily, and they they provide all these links to people that are writing about this stuff and and all the various. Uh, you know, information that has come out. So it's been really interesting. Is um, that, so that's your go-to for like what well, happened? Well, I just, right before the show, I just came across it. And I was like, oh, this, look at this thing. Here, you know, here's a nice, so they, have, they have a nice a timeline for all of this. You, you, need, <laughs> you need to use the web three is going just great time, you know, software and you could really do something with this. Yeah. yeah. Right, 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 right. Wow. So Everything. anyway, I, I, I didn't organize what I wanted to talk about here by, date or whatever. I did it by kind of topic. So in the beginning, what I have is the FTC is terrible and they need to be disbanded. So <laughs> we're in um, day, we're in day four and yeah, they're taking four. testimony uh, from executives, right? Yeah. Today we're going to see Satya Nadella. We're going to oh, see uh, the CEO. Bobby Sauron, the guy that writes the CEO of uh, Activision. Wow. Um, <laughs> whatever his real name is. I wonder, um, is that his real name, Sauron? Because that's no, I don't think so. But that's not how a I choice. Picture him. I, oh, you call him that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, Bobby yeah, Kotick. Like, uh, okay, now I yeah, get that it. Guy. Okay. <laughs> As I asked Brad this morning, but do you think this guy's going to show up on a stand? Like, does he such actually a, take human form? Such a Sauron like an eye, and Bobby like Sauron. Blinking, I get it. Okay. Like a blinking <laughs> eye on the stand. You know. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. He's not supposed to be that good of a guy. Anywho, um, so mm. the, the FTC, as you do, you hire expert witnesses. So they hired an econ economist, I think from Harvard, right? Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Awesome. So he literally, when pressed by Microsoft's lawyers, could not explain why this acquisition could in any way harm competition. Oops. <laughs> and it, yeah. And it's one of the things that uh, we've seen a lot in this case, and this is something that's kind of happened over time, is like how you frame it. So from Microsoft's perspective, honestly, it kind of doesn't matter. So if you if you want to describe this market as being Microsoft and Sony, these two console makers, Microsoft loses every time, right? Uh, is that true? I, did they win one time? No, they lost every time. So the uh, Microsoft, though, wants to phrase it as, well, actually, there's three companies in this market. And if you have three... Uh, we've always come in third, <laughs> you know, so they kind of go back at like this economist was really taking this kind of view that like the market was just these two companies. And it's like, um, yeah, but hold on a second. The gaming market is this giant thing. These companies are like some slice of it. There's there's much more going on here than right. that. But do you and buy that the third console is a Nintendo Switch? Really? I mean, well, it's Nintendo full stop, right? Like, yeah, yeah because what, what console? The, the Wii? What are you talking about? I mean, the Switch is depends not. On the, it depends on the generation. Yeah. Well, because. It, but these, these days, are, it's, it's, I mean, it's Xbox and PlayStation. It's not Xbox, PlayStation, yeah. and Switch. Okay, well, it, like I said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you want to. Well, that's it. one of the debates, right? It, isn't it? If it's, mm -hmm. well, and that's the, I think we talked about this at one point about antitrust, the, the, one of the vaguenesses of antitrust is that you have to define the market yeah, what's that you're the market? describing. Right. Mm -hmm. And you could describe it in any way. You know, if you want to say that Microsoft dominates the market for x86 based operating systems, yeah, they do. <laughs> but mm -hmm. is that the market that they compete in really? Because that market only uh, really includes yeah. Linux now, right? Yeah. You know, so um, yeah. yeah, they absolutely dominate that market. So um, it, for the for people or for company or organizations like the FTC that are trying to make a point, um, they could they want to point at something like uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming, which is game streaming, and say that's a market like the UK and, as the UK did. Yeah, yeah. and it is. It, it's a tiny market. If it's um, if gaming is if you look at gaming as a pie, I mean it's a it's a slice of the market that's so thin, like a pixel doesn't even you know overstates <laughs> like how much share that thing has by volume or by revenue, right? It's just a small thing. It's tiny. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, 
<laughs> it was also, I guess, an embarrassing. I've never seen it. I want to see the actual transcript of this part of it. But the FTC asked so many stupid questions of Phil Spencer that he ended up having to explain to them how mergers work. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which goes back to the editorial I wrote a week ago where I said the FTC does not understand what its role is in antitrust. And I used the example of um, the EU competition committee to Marguerite um, Vestager, right. who uh, spoke very eloquently to this topic uh, about a week ago. Uh, well, sorry, she did that about a month ago. Um, and I, this applies very much to the FTC. You know, she basically said, look, some people think that being a re regular means that you just say no. And it's yeah. like, no, it's more complicated than that. No, um, the job the job is to protect consumers, and that's a re it's 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 the it's for protecting consumers. Like that is the gig. Yeah, so yeah. tell me how the consumer you have to define the market to say okay, these are the consumers. How would they be harmed? Exactly, but and I think that's how the FTC's case falls apart because you really can't logically make that case. Yeah, I mean the question is, does Judge Corley get that too? Yeah, exactly. She's relatively new to the federal bench. Right. But she's right. always worked in California and in this space. So I got to think she her experiences have been so totally focused on all these deals should go through unless they can demonstrate harm. Yeah. Yeah. And the FTC is trying to make the point that uh, all we have to do is introduce any little bit of doubt. <laughs> you know, that might work on like a jury. It. I can't yeah, imagine that working on that, a judge. Right. I don't think so either. Um, yeah. If you guys aren't reading uh, Foss Patents, I strongly recommend doing so. Florian Miller has been doing an amazing job of covering um, of, of covering this as well. But, you know, I, I think to me, the 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 big kind of takeaway from the console market, the, the thing I, I if you, we go back a few years, five, two years, five years, whatever, mm -hmm. you said, you know, what's the big difference between like Sony and the PlayStation and Microsoft and Xbox? You know, I would have thought of these things as being very, very similar. Uh, Sony has pursued more of an exclusives kind of a strategy. Yeah. Well, which they, is, I think they always admire Nintendo. Yeah. Right. We, yeah. That has all of their own titles that never sell them to anybody else yeah. and owns their own little right. market. It is interesting. You think there's two Japanese companies in the video game business yeah. and one American company. And it is the American government going after the American company. Like, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what? yeah. Oh, yeah, I actually, I, this is sort of a, is it even worth mentioning? It's sort of a sidetrack, but I've been reading a lot about the early history of the video game and early home computer markets. And mm -hmm. um, the big mistake that Atari made was they never protected their initial console, the VCS, the 2600. Yeah. And so it, it gave rise to this notion of third party developers who were people not at Atari creating games for the system. There were too many of them. It created the video game crash of 1983, blah, blah, blah. Everyone kind of knows that history. Yeah, But in 1985, um, Nintendo wanted to come to the United States with what was going to be called the NES, the N Nintendo Entertainment System. I did. I sold a lot of them. Yep. And learning from Atari, they said, well, we're going to protect this thing. And yeah. wh what we're going to ensure is that only we release content for this device. Third parties have to come through us. It, yeah. They get our seal of approval. Out it mm -hmm. goes. They And they controlled the um, developer kits. You had to yes. apply to get the That's developer right. kit. Right. And, uh, you know, you could make the argument they kind of rescued the video game market. I I think it was always going to come back, but yeah, inevitably, whatever. but they were the ones who did it. I mean, I and, remember working a kiosk, literally getting pallet loads of Nezes and yeah. just oh, and same. never same got thing. to unload the pallet, just started handing them yep. to go to that, the till. That's exactly right. As in fast fact, as um, we could go. I worked at a Toys R Us and I got a call one day from a guy who said, hey, I just came back from New York City. And I saw this Nintendo. Now, you got to remember the name Nintendo at that time meant like nothing. It was yeah. like, I think it was maybe, did they make Donkey Kong and maybe yeah, Mario they had Brothers? Arcade and games. Yeah. They had, yeah. But they, they were nobody. So uh, anyway, they had a video game system. This is what the guy said. I'll never forget this. He says, it comes with a gun that you can shoot at the TV <laughs> and a robot that will play video games against you. And I said, sir, I think you're drinking. I've never heard of such a thing. That's crazy. <laughs> and then two days later, we got these giant um, cages full of these things in. And that's what it was, basically. Yeah. Right. But Duck Hunt. Yeah. What? But the, the <laughs> model that they created was the one we still have today. Yeah. Literally, they invented it. And it's, you know, this system where you have uh, some kind of control over the console, right? So yeah. Xbox, it's, Sony, it's whatever. It's quality control because in yeah. the end, you took a Nintendo game and put it in a Nintendo machine and mm -hmm. so it's Nintendo's fault if it sucks. That's right. 
That's right. So they did a good job with Atari that. Atari learned I mean, this because they allowed uh, yeah. third parties. Instead that's of right. Well, that's, Atari. Atari was the, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, Co- and, coincidentally, my whiskey story ties into this. Too. Oh, my I'm God. Just, I'm just going to give you a full loop back. Stay okay. tuned. And I will, also, I will also say, coincidentally, that the first third-party video game company of all time was, wait for it, mm-hmm. Activision. Yeah, a group of four or five, I don't remember, Exitari. Uh, oh, yeah, I had Activision uh, Adventure, I think. Right? Was that for Atari? Mm-hmm. Well, Pitfall. Pitfall, uh, the that's the one. one. Um, yeah. yeah, what a great yeah. game. They were tired of not having their games on the boxes, and they didn't understand why a game that made $2 million didn't give them a bonus. Are they kind. the, so the they only uh, independent gaming company that's still kind of act very that's active? still around? Yeah. I mean, they're all technically still around because yeah. there have been so many acquisitions. Right. They and, just got rolled it's up, the, right? It's the mark that they people buy the brand. Well, I should say, I mean, not yeah, all. The brand I mean, and, and the original around. bits, um, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. if yeah. anything, Gabe Newell and Steam rescued a lot of lost right. software right. of right. closed out companies and put them in a place where you can get them for a buck a piece. <laughs> right. So... Uh, I've lost track of why we're talking about this. So, um, <laughs> oh, so consoles. But this is really consoles. about a, no. Yes. This is a, it, it, it's about exclusives, right? So this is the thing. So I, I would have said a few, even just a few years ago, I, I never really, I, I was kind of anti exclusives, right? To me, I feel like games should just be out in the world, like they should be everywhere, right? Yeah. And oh, it's bad for consumers. It's good for the company, yeah. right? It sells. Yeah, it's worked hardware. out great for Sony. It's worked out great for Nintendo. I still feel like Nintendo and Sony could have could still now do better. I don't understand why Nintendo doesn't release all of their classic games on the iPhone and the iPad. I, It just makes no sense to me. You have this classic library of games that people still want to play, yep. but that's not, that's not the way they do things. So that's fine. Now, uh, Microsoft has some exclusives, right? We know Gears of War, Halo, et cetera, but they've been slower to that. I think their um, game... Uh, studio buying binge has been based around kind of building up that exclusive thing. But one of the things that came out in this was that not only does Sony have exclusives that they only ship on their own console, they actually pay studios millions of dollars so that they will not ship their games on Xbox. Yeah. That is incredible well, to me. Well, I mean, isn't the root of this story Starfield? Because originally Starfield yes. was going to be a PS5 only game. And yes, this was one of the revelations. Only game. Is that's yeah. why that's right. they bought? That's right. They bought. Yeah, uh, they had. Um, Sony had successfully convinced uh, Activision Blizzard to release they, two games only on Sony, and really Bethesda, right? And, Beth- and Bethesda. That's me. why they bought and, Bethesda. Uh, yes, right. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm mixing. It was up. it ZeniMax? Starfield. ZeniMax, which owned ZeniMax Bethesda, parent, which you know, yeah. you can see, this is how these things happen, right? Which owned ID Software, which you know, it's like this. You know, these companies are still kind of in there, you know, but uh, they're maybe not the same as they were in the, in the past. But there was but testimony yeah, so, that because they were so concerned mm-hmm. about Starfield being an exclusive with Sony, right. they bought ZeniMax. That's right. To prevent that from happening. Amazing. Um, it is. It's amazing. It's astonishing to me, though, that in this world, you could have a business practice that amounts to paying partners to not support a competitor. Mm-hmm. And that's... That's so. How is that okay? How is that not anti-competitive? That's crazy. Microsoft at one point considered a strategy where they would outspend Sony so much that Sony would just go bankrupt. Like they they literally considered just doing that to Sony all the time because they have infinite dollars and they could just buy up every game. And eventually they decided that was silly and they didn't do that. But because Sony is so uh, predatory, they were like, how are we gonna like? How do we put a stop to this? Well, you make the uh, Xbox X two hundred dollars, yeah, right, sure. and yeah, and you roll out Game Pass with all of the titles. Like, yeah, you can smash the market. Yeah, I, I would argue that's genuinely anti-competitive. That's dumping effectively. Well, I would see now. I would just, I would take the pro Microsoft argument and say <laughs> it's a, a, a razor blade model, Richard. It's I a, think it's a risk though that the judge. <laughs> yes, there's been a lot of. You're right. I'm, I'm there's scared. been a lot of evidence that you know maybe supports Microsoft here, but the judge might well say, all he is are acting in your best interest and, and it's damaging sure. the consumer. I mean, that's, no, no, that's I, the I, case, right? I think is I think there's a strong case for the FTC coming out and saying in America. If the yeah. game is not available on all platforms, you can't ship the game. Yeah. Which yeah. would, by the way, be disastrous for Sony. Oh, yeah. Not just Sony, it's, it's, lots it's, of small uh, I mean, independent so, uh, game developers yeah. <laughs> who are developing for exclusives. Uh, one of That's the, a lot one of extra the big work. Arguments. 
Yeah. One of my big issues with this FTC thing is that there's all this clear abuse going on in the game industry, and this is like who you chose to go after. Yeah. I'll tell you, whatever comes out of this, if the FTC wins or the FTC loses, Microsoft buys Activision Blizzard or doesn't, I don't think anyone's going after Sony. No, I don't think that happens. That's one, and, by and the that way. That blows my mind. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the conclusions I drew from so the four days of testimony so far. But is he, yeah, is Sony the other is side the worst. <laughs> the yeah, worst. they're the worst. And, and why isn't anyone going after them yeah. for this behavior? Yeah. Yeah. And, what, they're, and that, what they are doing is crazy. And I mean, I think it's inarguably illegal, but that's, that's just an opinion. We're, meanwhile, what we're worried about is like, what might Microsoft do? Mm. You know, but, but it, doesn't I, this really speak to an administration that is anti-tech giant? Yes. Yep. Yep. And and also is pro Japan because they're well positioned with relation to con to con concerns around China. So you kind of don't want to mess with anything Japanese while you're trying to get some other things done over there. Like, the, well, I just wonder if there's some behind the scenes action here from. Yeah, a, I agree with you on the. This administration has a clear uh, dictate to go after big tech. Mm -hmm. This is, but this is the barn doors already open. The horses are gone. I don't understand. Oh no, and and it's the thing is, if you're going to use the courts, yeah. generally speaking, the courts look at the law, and then there's no law here. Yeah, go after the biggest abusers. You know, for starters, I, I it, Microsoft is competing in a market here in which there is an, a serial abuser. That serial, abu serial abuser has complained that Microsoft might, in fact, use its own strategy against it. And it doesn't mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> and somehow <laughs> regulators and courts have said, yeah, that's a problem. That and seems it's like, wrong. What is happening? Like, but what some, so what the judge, though, is is not going to be saying, I mean, he might be saying this in his head, but he's not going to be saying, uh, oh, you know, my, Sony's the problem here. He's going to judge the case on the merits of the case. Her. Her. Sorry. <laughs> It's a woman, sorry. sorry. So, no, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, no, yeah. you're no, you're no, no. You're right, and and I, uh, but I think that's that not Sony's the case before her is Sony's behavior. So, right. no. But here's the thing. So I don't know the numbers. Not the and time, and I don't think you, you know. I doubt she is doing what we're doing, which is saying, well, this is a, a case that Sony really brought. No, I think actually, I think logically, she should be saying. I know. That. Well, you and I know. But what's that. the argument? What's well, the argument? But it here? wasn't I mean, Sony. It was the FTC, and I think she has to act as if. This okay. is not in well, Sony's interest. That this isn't Sony saying, "Let's do something in our interest." She has to look at the case and the mer on the merits of the case, right? Mm. Yes, and uh, among the merits of the case is the fact that Microsoft competes in a market in which a serial abuser has run roughshod over this industry and done everything it can to disenfranchise Xbox. Yeah, where my Microsoft's whole thing has been, "Look, we just want games to be everywhere. We're not even asking." For all of our games to be Xbox exclusives, I mean, there will be some. Of course, there will. But even if, like the all but the biggest Activision Blizzard games be, somehow become Xbox exclusives, that pie chart where you show how many exclusive each company has, Nintendo and Sony are still way ahead. Yeah, you know, it's bizarre to me that they do this so much, and they're so concerned that Microsoft might do it with the two or three titles that have come up. Let's so, see. So see, they did it here. This is my they did it this once. This is my question: Is does can the judge look at that as a whole, uh, or does the judge have to look at the FTC's specific filing against Microsoft to decide whether Microsoft is a problem? Can she say, "Well, yeah"? yeah. Well, th but that's part of the and uh, yeah. I mean, this is part of evidence, right? This is the the point of this testimony, right? right? That you right. see both sides of it. In other words, Sony says, "Yeah, look what they did. They bought this company." And they made two of the games, one's a, one of which is a piece of crap, Xbox exclusives. Oh, my God. Can you believe how badly they're behaving? Yeah, but and Sony's Microsoft not says, on trial here, right? Or no, no, they? no. But that's the, that's the testimony. I know that. Microsoft says, yes, but this is apparently very common in this industry. Look how many games Sony has made in exclusive. By the way, Sony has paid publishers, more publishers money to keep more games off of our console than we have paid publishers to keep them only on our console. Like, what are we talking about here? This well, is and the it, way and there's simple works. remediation here too. It's like, mm -hmm. just say you won't do that. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Into it. But uh, okay. So, and I'm not sure how uh, this kind of hearing uh, in a civil case differs from. But you you can't as a criminal defendant say, well, but everybody else is doing it, isn't yeah. a defense, right? So I don't know if that's the case in this. It, it might be. It's I don't either. I mean, I, honestly. That's right. I mean, I, no one has um, suggested this behavior is illegal in this courtroom, right? Yeah. Um, 
no, I don't it's know. A, it's, I, not, I, it's not an illegality issue. It's an antitrust but it's, issue. It's, right? It, Right. It's an issue. Well, it's basically just about educating people about way, how this market works. Right. Yeah. So Microsoft has tried to compete in its own way. I mean, good, bad, indifferent, whatever. Sony has done their own thing. They've obviously been enormously successful. You know, the net result is that Microsoft has come in third place. Microsoft knows it needs to make some changes. It's also missed out on some things, right? It hasn't, uh, it doesn't have what my, I, I forget, I think the, Term you use, yeah, Phil Spencer called it an, or, an organic strategy for mobile, meaning they really haven't gone after mobile. They released a, a handful yeah. of silly games uh, here and there, but uh, you know they they they've looked at acquisitions to solve this problem. It's it's kind of the typical big company solution, right? They actually considered buying over one hundred different companies to try to figure this out. Uh, one of them was Square Enix, right? And um, one of the things they wanted to do with that company was get into uh, Asia because they also don't do well in Asia, but, mm -hmm. uh, but create a mobile native game pass offering, meaning native mobile games that you would download to your device and use as part of a subscription, just like we have on PC and console today. Um, that they, that's one thing they've considered that that's uh, not happening. I mean, the problem with buying square Enix is they make final fantasy. <laughs> right. <laughs> exclusively for Sony. Sure. The final fantasy, the call of duty of video games. Mm -hmm. Um, Wait a minute. Oh, I, I thought Call of Duty was the Call of Duty of video games. That, that was my joke. I have <laughs> oh, okay. to. I'll be right back. I apologize. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul's leaving. I just, I yeah. worry about the, I, the, uh, it sounds like Microsoft's defense uh, is, we have a, we, we're doing this defensively. Like, mm -hmm. uh, well, we have to, Your Honor, because these other guys are so predatory. We have to be predatory. And I just wonder if the judge, well, I don't think they would use that language. Well, no, but I, that, isn't is that the, kind of which what is the problem? But isn't that kind no, of it, what no, they're by saying? By the way, it's 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 literally what they're saying, but they can't say predatory, right? No, no, in no. other words, but I think they're trying to emphasize yeah. this is the way it's done in this business. But this I don't is, think that right. makes it, it. That's what I mean. Legal. That's exactly right. And I wonder if the judge. I wonder what the judge's purview is. If she is allowed mm -hmm. to say, "Yeah, you know, if you're going to su succeed in this business, you have to be a jerk." Uh, well, <laughs> okay. No, but and it's okay. No, no, it's, Go ahead, be look, a jerk. The, I don't think she's going to do that. The she power might say, of any particular. She might say platform. Sony and Nintendo are not on trial here. You are. We should deal with right. Sony. Yes, but that's not the case in front of me right now. Is that possible? We are competing in a market in which our competitors don't just release exclusives, but they literally pay companies not to release products right. for our platform. Right. right. What we want to do is mostly release cross-platform games and reserve a couple of those games for ourselves. The biggest games, Call of Duty, et cetera, we will have explicit agreements to bring to always bring cross-platform to everybody, anyone who wants it. And they've done it. They've already proven this. They've, so they've made those deals. Is their argument, we're the good guys here? And you should it let is us literally where the good guys. Yeah. Yep. Well, yep. And and are also aggrieved in the sense that, you know, the the line we bought Bethesda because they were because this Sony is, was trying to pay them to make Starfield a PS5 exclusive. Right, right, exactly. And now they, uh, Sony, a company that has paid other companies not to ship products on our platform yeah. is now complaining that we are doing that with one game. But again, the complaint isn't coming from Sony. You and I know it is, but it's not from yeah. the judge's point of view. Okay, it's well, coming it doesn't from matter the Federal Trade Commission. Okay. So she's not yeah. allowed to say, oh yeah, this is Sony's uh, action. It's not. Sure. Yeah, I, but Microsoft it's, but it's, has, the FTC has to prove harm. Yes, and you know, but it can be no can prove. That's the question. I mean, it could prove harm absent any knowledge about Sony's. Well, I, bad I we actions. have to look at it kind of a net. So we look if we want to look at this really narrowly, just very narrowly. Say, does Microsoft only releasing Starfield on Microsoft uh, platforms uh, indicate some form of consumer harm? And you'd have mm -hmm. to say, yeah, because they're not releasing a cross platform. This game might have been cross platform right. before. And, and, and it's expected to be an incredibly hot title. Yep. So, so you're like, wow, oh, there you go. We've and been, again, that's we, a we perfect shown, concession to get. We have shown say. harm, right? Yeah. But that's not it, right? It's bigger than this one game. Activision Blizzard makes all these other games too. And Bethesda, Zenimax, whatever we have. What, what do we actually do with our games? What have we done? The vast majority of games that Microsoft publishes are... Avail well, that's not actually, I can't even say that. I'm sorry. I, I, that's I, not true. Actually, what I was about to say is not true. But the vast majority of games that we've uh, gotten through big studio acquisitions, which is basically just Max, um, are still cross-platform. We haven't, we haven't 
taken the majority of them and made them Xbox Xbox exclusives. We haven't done that. We have done a few. This is so tricky because there are plenty of other industries. You know, Ford does not make an F-150 for Chevrolet. Yeah. Uh, if every uh, single Ford yeah. vehicle is exclusive to Ford, every... Every single Chevrolet vehicle is exclusive. No, but that's Chevrolet. But it's more common. Okay. So we can't use that example because Why not? there are third. They're all using the same third parties creating uh, content that goes to these platforms, right? In other words, it's not. Um, it'd be like a windshield wiper maker. <laughs> you know, uh, do they only supply? Did, did uh, Ford pay this windshield wiper maker some fee not to ship their windshield wipers on GM? Would that you know, be that a problem? I don't think so. I don't. Well, and I think you can make I mean, the economic kind of argument about. that uh, it's it's costly and inefficient to make it for many platforms. So yeah. it's not right. unreasonable I, for yeah. something yeah. to be only on Xbox or only so, on PlayStation. Right. That's My, a reasonable Microsoft's, economic decision. <laughs> right. So Microsoft's central argument. Everyone focuses on the big stuff, right? So the big the big thing here is Call of Duty. And the and Microsoft has reached very explicit agreements with that. They've also been very explicit when they've talked about it and said, look, economically, it doesn't make any sense for us to restrict the access to this game. We want to expand the access to this game. And uh, they would do it in ways that Activision Blizzard on its own has not done, including putting it on Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Cloud Gaming, right? Um, that's something Activision just has shown no interest in they make plenty of money on this title they, they like what they're doing they it's not they're not interested in that stuff microsoft would be interested in doing that but those things would not outweigh the money that they make for putting it on the playstation right Look, the playstation if, is if you really wanted a fair playing field you would restrict mm -hmm. the platform makers from making games at all sony should not make games <laughs> microsoft shouldn't yeah, make games yeah, yeah. they should all yeah. be made by third party entities well, and then they could act economically in their interest, ir irrespective of the platform makers. I agree that would with be you, the right like, solution, you, right? But uh, but that's not a solution to this case. This, like you well, said, I this agree. case is limited to, to right. Yeah. I'm I'm, but I mean, if, so that's the problem. Is yeah, is yeah. you There's have all kinds of problems. you have yeah, <laughs> but you have kind of um, what what is an untenable situation already. That's right. Which is that platform makers are also in the business of content. Well, but this is, you know, we just talked about Atari briefly. I mean, Atari kind of yeah. invented it. They weren't the first one with the cartridge. You know, they yeah, and this is why Nintendo game. did what they had to do because they had to protect their, well, no, but, their quality. But they popularized this notion of we created this box that you buy and you put in your living room and then we make these little boxes that you plug into them right. and you play those games. And, and that was, uh, you know, they were like the... Um, Fair, there's a very the famous... The Kleenex of that market. They there's a Atari, very famous but, you know, antitrust case the film, the movie companies owned the theaters. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and this was similar. The theaters are the platforms, the content is the films. And it was a big issue because they had content exclusives and so forth. The courts decided that they should divest the theaters, that the movie companies yeah. couldn't own theaters. Mm -hmm. sure. As I think that's a direct but, analogy. To but this. I think there's, a, but there's another part to this, which is that our market is evolving. We're right. going away from buying discrete games into subscription models. Right. The same, yeah. the, the same way that we've There's seen the also, consolidation in Netflix and Disney. And so, if yeah. ga you know, gaming's headed this way, it would be problematic to put in regulation that impairs the evolution of a market. It, right. And there's also this notion of market size, because, you know, again, if the gaming market overall is this giant thing, I mean, what, what slice is console gaming, right? Um, PCs, I believe by revenue, have just surpassed console gaming revenues this past year or this year will. Um, but they're both eclipsed by a dramatic amount by game, uh, by mobile gaming, casual gaming, you know, that kind of thing. So when you have companies that primarily play in this console space, they, I'm sure they're looking. Well, you can see what they've done. Sony and Microsoft have both made inroads in PC gaming. Uh, both of them have been slow to make inroads in mobile gaming. And that's where the real growth is. Uh, Microsoft's approach is very Microsoft centric. You know, when you're a hammer, everything's a nail. Uh, we have a big cloud business. I wonder how we could get into mobile. Oh, I know. Uh, we'll do cloud gaming stuff. You know, we'll, that's how we'll do it. Um, they don't do the organic gaming, as as Phil Spencer said. I think they should. I think Nintendo should, by the way. I think Sony should too. Um, and when you're a big company, one of the ways you do that is to acquire studios that do do that, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's part of the strategy behind this Activision Blizzard acquisition. Um, I mean, mobile gaming 
from a business model is pretty problematic, right? It's a much more predatory <laughs> business space. The game, you yeah. can't charge much for the games up front. There's no concept of subscription model. Yep, it's so, a different thing. Yeah. yeah, you're basically giving away the game and then psychologically manipulating people to pay for stuff that doesn't, that that makes them play more. So, right? like, I, uh, okay. Well, I'll give you this. I mean, I would argue it's a... <laughs> It's fine when there's a it's, whole bunch of little companies making these horrible games, but as soon as there's well, a big company doing it, I'll give you a good example. Like Activision Blizzard yeah. makes Diablo 4, which is a very hot game, came out a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago, and I play in Diablo right. 4. Right at the front page, it says, you know, <laughs> if you really yeah. want the full experience, you need to subscribe right. to Microsoft Game Pass. Otherwise, you won't be it able to... It says Microsoft Game Pass, really? Yes, Otherwise, mm -hmm. you won't be able to play against head-to-head. Uh, -head. You won't see other players at all. That You need to at least have a, a games with gold. Oh, well, I see. Oh, for the multiplayer stuff. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I mean, yes, you, you can play. Is, but, but the way they phrase it is you can play all by yourself and lonely. Or sure. get a Microsoft subscription and things will be much so better. The, 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 I wish I'd taken a screenshot what, of that for you. One of the big pushbacks. It worked, by the way. These days, I got my these. Microsoft Game Pass because of it, so it worked. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, one of the things that people have pushed back a lot over the past couple of years is these like loot boxes and other kind of pay-to-win type situations. Yeah, Diablo's the EU's been all over that game. Yeah. Yeah. So you just said, you know, Richard was, I think, was talking about this notion that you get these games for free and you, they figure out these psychological That's ways to get you to pay for it. things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's weird when you have a game like Call of Duty or Diablo or whatever it might be, where you actually pay seventy dollars for that thing and then get to pay. They still more. do that. You know, it's yeah. not so it's not even free up front. Now, right. of course, I think they right. justify that by saying, "Look, it costs a billion dollars, whatever the figure is, to hundreds of millions of dollars to create this game." Uh, it's you a know, slightly you the, know it's it's more investment than like Flappy Bird or whatever. The real um, argument is, you want this game, don't you? What yeah. will the market bear? 60 bucks, mm -hmm. 70 bucks? No yeah, problem. I mean, I, I look, I was uh, a big Call of Duty guy uh, for a long time, and I watched as this God, evolved. That makes me sad when I hear you say I was a big guy. <laughs> well, I could say, you never know, but um, <laughs> I'm looking into a, uh, no, I'll, I'll talk about that. Anyway, so there's a, um, uh, Call of Duty in the beginning was really about, uh, it was a single player experience. It was like, they were, you, it was like you were going to war. And then they started doing multiplayer, and uh, that got really big, and it was interesting. And then over time, they, they they were like oh we can make more money if we ship like levels over time and we could do these like drops and uh now we have like a season's pass so you pay 60 bucks for the game and 60 bucks so to cover you for the rest of the you know the year and then they saw like what was happening with like battle rail type games like fortnite and they were like all right all right here we go all right so we're also going to do like by the time you get like to modern day like call it what is call of duty it's like this giant octopus of like different ways to spend money revenue streams and, yeah yeah it's crazy. And that's, you know, I don't know, maybe that's a natural evolution. I don't know. But, it, it, you know, anyone who plays Call of Duty today would be well served to go back and uh, install the original Call of Duty and, and just see how horrifically, hilariously different it is. Yeah. Uh, and how well, it's true it of is, Diablo, you know? too. Yeah. The original yeah. Diablo. Well, and, it, and, therein, and therein lies the real push for you to get online quote unquote yeah. online it's not to play with more people it's for them to be able to pitch you offers constantly yeah, <laughs> yeah. and to have sure. and yeah. to have you your payment have loot information boxes in without online right. yeah without online and without right. a credit card in place all of which you need to do to get game pass so you get all that done so that when i catch you in that skinner box moment exactly. in that moment where you need to gamble <laughs> we have a card you number. just have to click the button and it happens yeah. i've got your money I don't have to ask for a car. I don't have to do well, any of that. So it's this actually is, it was a mutual benefit society because it was Xbox Live, by the way. Uh, but five yeah. bucks a month, and I looked at it. Well, for a yeah. few extra, I get, you know, anyway. Um, sure. It's a mutual benefit because, you know, you know, Activision Blizzard knows Microsoft's going to be maybe our owner. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's do something nice for them. And, yeah, we can do loot boxes or, you, you know, you can buy nice, you know, outfits. And mm -hmm. by the way. Who makes uh, Diablo? You know who makes Diablo? Activision, Activision Blizzard. Blizzard. Oh, no. All I know is they make Call of Duty. They, they make other games, you say. <laughs> yeah. um, yes. Have you ever heard of World okay. of Warcraft? It's a fun game. Yeah, vaguely. I mean, yeah. it sounds like a, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, I've been ha I happily played Dredge beginning to end in 10 hours. Yeah. Wow. And immediately played it again. Yeah. Wow. I miss those yeah, days with games like that. But um, yeah, just a good little story game, all self contained, no multi user, no loot boxes, just a great story. Diablo, and, and I think this you know. is Diablo is crack. I mean, they're clearly yeah. selling something that uh, oh, yeah. is, it, it's like a slot and, machine. And, and it's, no, it's, it's, 
This is the Skinner box. You know, B.F. Skinner was the psychologist that that taught us how so, this works. And I'm happily, and uh, has been, I'm happily. Oh, you're banging away, <laughs> banging away on the button, man. You're banging away on the button. It's a fun <laughs> game. I've played every one of them. And uh, but now that you got Game Pass, they wired that button to your credit card. So keep slamming. <laughs> so now we understand how uh, gambling has taken over sports because it's happened in esports first. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Anyway, this is the market that Microsoft finds itself in, right? And Things wants to be changed. further in. <laughs> well, I mean, over 20 years ago, they entered this console market. I mean, think about how different things were back then. Sega mm -hmm. still made hardware. Yeah. Right. Sony uh, had established itself, um, obviously, with the first PlayStation. And then the PlayStation 2 was the biggest thing in the world. And Nintendo was always a thing, right? The Nintendo's had a few missteps, but they've always had this kind of little slice of the market not little they've had a big slice of the market that is just kind of uniquely them the disney of video gaming whatever it is i i i don't i i think microsoft was still riding a the windows model works kind of high at that time how can we apply this to video game hardware they based the first one on a pc architecture um we'll bring in all you know the windows pc game makers and they can put titles on this thing pretty easily yada 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 but you know flash forward um you know 20 years plus it's uh, they've you know they're coming last <laughs> so now um, one of the stories i really liked from this whole thing was this mm -hmm. that kotick threatened to pull call of duty from xbox this is astonishing they, yeah it's um, like i've never heard that before the, yeah you talk oh, about so stuff that comes new. out of these trials so that actually ties into that um uh that conversation a little bit earlier S where, save, save um, this if you would because i want i we need to take a break and okay. this would be a good thing to make we'll people. Be the Let's do a little loot okay. box for Leo. It's Leo's loot box time. If you want that story, nice. you're going to have to stay tuned through this ad. Uh, I've got a Patreon if you guys want to. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. The podcast is free. Just attach your credit card and no salespeople will call. No, our show today brought to you by Lookout. It's something you do want to know. If you are running a business, you know the business has really changed. Uh, and I think it's forever. Uh, boundaries to where we work, how we work, uh, have completely disappeared. And by the way, when employees are on the move, your data and your, your is on the move too. Whether on a device or in even in the cloud or across networks or at a local coffee shop, this is... This is the new world of work, and that's great. Your workforce loves it, right? But your IT security folks may be saying, ay, ay, ay. Pity the poor IT security folks. You know, uh, they have multi-point tools. They're legacy solutions. They're struggling to keep up with everything that's changing. They need Lookout. Lookout lets you control your data and free your workforce. You know, best of both worlds. With Lookout, you gain complete visibility into all your data, minimize risk from internal and external threats, plus ensure compliance. And by seamlessly securing hybrid work, your organization doesn't have to sacrifice productivity for security. Everybody wins, including IT, because instead of a complex multi-tool solution, they've got a single unified platform, Lookout. It reduces IT complexity and gives you and your team more time to focus on whatever else is coming your way. And believe me, there's stuff coming your way. Good protection. It shouldn't be a cage. It should be a springboard, letting you and your organization bound into the future of your making. Visit Lookout.com today to learn how to safeguard data, secure hybrid work, and reduce IT complexity. That's Lookout.com. We thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly. We really appreciate that, and uh, you support us when you go to lookout.com and uh, and try it out. Try it out. Paul Therott, Richard Campbell. Richard's off getting tea, as he often does at this time. My Pixel Fold arrived, Leo. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. Hold her up. Let's see it. You okay. ordered that, huh? Or is it a review unit? No, I ordered this. I wish. Two thousand eight. What is it, 1800 bucks? Yeah, not if everything all to, all in, it was like nineteen hundred bucks. A lot of people are saying when they first get it, oh, it's not quite like I thought it would be. Like, it's more square, yeah, right? It's, that's right. That's right. It's more I like, like a duo. I don't. I, I I like the um, I didn't like the way the Samsung ones were so tall and thin. Yeah, I feel like the outside of this will be a more normal. It's a full screen kind of on the outside screens. that would be yeah, almost like um, a phone. So it's just it doesn't even look that thick. Too. Actually, it looks kind of nice. Yeah. Now you saw Ron Amadio over at Ars Technica uh, 
<laughs> his, yes, I did. his died in four days because it got a grit or something in the, uh, there's a little yeah. space between the plastic screen protector and the actual OLED screen. Well, I'm sure he didn't spend edge. any of his own money on that. So No, yeah, but you did on yours, <laughs> so I want you to take care. I okay? did. Yeah. I sure did. Yeah. Wow, I'm I'm interested that you bought that. Were yeah, you... I, I've never had any interest in a folding phone yet, and I think the... It was just kind of that my wife has interest in a folding phone, and I think the. But I would thought I would have thought the flip the would have been more her. Speed. I would have thought the same, but my yeah. wife said no. I want the she other. She wants thing. a big and screen. Said, well, let me let me let me give it a shot. And uh, so this see. is really going to be her phone if you approve. Well, if we, yeah, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> he uses a Samsung, whatever Ultra, something, something. I don't know. Yeah, I have the Ultra. We'll see. Twenty. We'll see. Two, twenty-three, whatever the latest Ultra is. 23. 23. You know, I... Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. I am in a conundrum right now because mm. I bought some, and they're really nice, Denon earbuds. Remember yeah. there was a Kickstarter a company in Australia called Nura, and they were going to make these uh, earbuds that were super high fidelity and had software that would measure your ear automatically, oh. like a yes. hearing test. So they got bought by uh, Massimo, which owns the Denon uh, brand, along with Polka okay. Audio and Barnes uh, Barnes and Noble, Bowers and Wilkin. Very similar. Anyway, uh, Microsoft might have been part of that. Den Denon released this Neuron Neura um, earbuds. Now they call it the Denon Pearl Personal Listening, and I got the yeah. Pearl Pro. But the, to really use this earbud, you need the latest Aptex codec. It supports mm -hmm. not only Aptex HD and low latency, but Aptex lossless, which Ooh, is very high bandwidth yeah. Bluetooth. So you do like Tidal and whatever else. Yeah, and in theory, you could have high bitrate music. <laughs> it's only in theory because I cannot find a, a single product that, even though this has yeah. been out for a year, supports Aptex lossless. Aptex lossless. Um, if you ever see one... <laughs> I mean, no. When you say a product, you mean in other words, you should like be able a, to do it well, from a phone. You would think the iPhone would know. It doesn't support Aptex no, at all. No, no, I actually I wouldn't think, think the, the Pixel would, would I, know. You'd think Samsung the Samsung S23, S23 being on the Snapdragon platform would. It yep. supports. I know Snapdragon supports it. I know they. They don't want to pay the license. They might have even lossless. invented it. They don't want to pay yeah, the okay. license for lossless. So it supports, I think, HD, but not lossless. No, I'm not. Huh. I think it doesn't even do HD. Do you have to get, can you get like a DAC or something that does it? You can get a DAC. I guess it wouldn't matter. There, uh, yeah, Fio sells a thousand dollar DAC that does it. It's, <laughs> okay. it's not just, it's not just a DAC. It's a, it's like a. a so you have these headphones or earbuds over there that, that, that won't. Won't, well, they work their best. fine, but they won't do their best with. So I, I want to review it, but I kind of want to find. An Aptex lossless device. Sorry, are they, are they earbuds or headphones? They're earbuds. Uh, headphones? They make headphones earbuds. too, like that. So but these are earbuds. They're really nice. It would earbuds. be weird. It would be weird to <laughs> to pair earbuds with a really expensive home theater or like a home stereo. Yeah, I was thinking components. of doing that, buying a little Bluetooth that codec. Might, that might be the only way to do it. I think right? I have I mean, to. Yeah, I think yeah. I have to. There are uh, Aptex lossless, you know, standalone. Stereo I can't codecs. believe that no device does this. I wonder if it's a battery life issue. No, I think it's a license fee issue. It's fairly new. It came out last year. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I was just thinking that. So I'd love, if you want to do a review of that uh, phone for yeah. us, we would love that. Oh. He's got the new, sure. Richard, I mean, you, you might have missed this. He just got the new Pixel Fold. Oh, yeah. From Google. Yeah. yeah the only issue I knew, is and I'm I surprised a, because, you know, weird. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm not going to hold on to this, I have to get rid of it before we go to ne Mexico next week. Yeah, you only have so a, this, couple, a little time to return. The next it. few days will be uh, will be yeah. telling. Be focused. I'm still very suspicious of the durability of folding OLED yep. screens. And I would be suspicious of anything hardware that Google makes, especially a V1 product. I have the Galaxy Fold uh, about a generation, two generations ago. I have the flip phone, which I really liked, uh, yeah. but I never used them long enough to know if those OLEDs would hold up. Right. Right. No, it's a concern. I, you, you. There are people like uh, that guy from Mars Technica that have a problem on day one. There are people who have used them continually and have never right. had issues. Yeah, <laughs> Ron know? might just have had bad I, luck. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I am. You know, get, sometime next month, Samsung's going to announce the new Fold and uh, Flip. Yep. I'll probably buy oh, a Flip. I, they are, but I, I, I see. I, I think the little one is interesting too. I, I, they're not going to be able to change the form. Uh, they, I, not, they're not understood to be. 
changing the form factor on the big one. Um, no, but on I the like flip, the they're going to have a bigger screen on the outside screen. Yeah, it's gonna fill I think that looks phone. cool. I think that's neat. I know. That looks you like know? a good phone. I like it. I'll probably get that like one. It. But I would love to know if you, even a thumbnail yeah. review, you know, we're bringing back hands-on technology sure. in the club. And mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to, next time you do hands, are you going to do hands-on windows before you go to Mexico? Yeah, we're doing one more tomorrow. If you want to do a two-minute, just like, wow. it could be like a uh, first look, not a real review, but yeah, yeah got it. Yeah, here's yeah. what it looks like. Here's my thoughts. We would love that. Put that. We'll put that in hands-on okay. technology. Thank you. Sure. Sure. That's it. And part of it is, you know, we, we canceled all about Android. We don't have uh, an Android show anymore. Yeah, so. that's too bad, yeah. Just, you know, the audience had been going down for three or four years. And I, I wonder me. if it's a reflection on Android that... Interesting. Not that the, I mean, oh, Android's still like the best selling yeah, yeah, yeah. platform. Best selling phone. But, but I don't phones think, have not been innovative for yeah, a while. I think, it, right, you know, right. it's bad enough with iPhone users. I think they've kind of lost interest, but at least they're yeah. somewhat interested. But Android people, it's just a, it's a tool, it's a device. They don't want to listen to a and podcast. So the issue that Google uh, uh, addressed this during Google I.O. because someone asked them, uh, I don't remember who it was, but someone behind the scenes kind of said, hey, um, you know, it didn't seem like the Android stuff was all that interesting. You know, Apple does this big bang thing every year, and they basically said, look, you know, Apple ships new hardware every year with their OS, and they only ship it to themselves. Right. So it makes sense for them Talk to use that platforms. model. platforms. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Google does what Microsoft's doing with Windows, which is right. like they, Everybody they have quarterly it. updates, they have monthly updates, yeah. they they improve it throughout the year. So the big bang thing is like, it's, it's really more of a soft rollout. Like when Android releases Android 14 this year, it doesn't, doesn't make any... It no, make it no ways. Yeah, nobody's getting it. No, you know, how many more you, cameras did you want? Yeah, well, it doesn't you know, matter. Like, it's like it doesn't like if you're on Samsung. It's like yeah, yeah, you might get it in the next five months. You know, yeah. it's not. It's not like when you release iOS, everyone gets it immediately. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Phones, yeah, maybe phones it's a marketing been, thing. Yeah, yeah, phones have been slabs of black glass for fifty. I think years. that's part yeah. of it. How, yeah, how excited are you going to be? Well, that's we, why I'm excited about this because it's two slabs of black glass. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> with, no, with, a, with a with a delicate connection between them, it's very likely to fail you. And, and some make you some angry. weird plastic that bends. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, everything's going to be fine. I would. I really <laughs> am curious about it though. Thank you for uh, getting it. Eighteen hundred right. schmackers. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of money Jeez. for a lot of it. It's, it it's better dance. But they do have a they do have a liberal return policy and they have good training. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that Samsung really wants you or Pixel to Google really wants yeah. you to try it yep. anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, you got to so, tell me this thirty revelation about. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. your so, loot box is about to open. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so tying back to the early conversation about markets and sizes of markets and whatnot. So one of the problems with the gaming market is because people will bring this up all the time. Like so, uh, consoles like Xbox, PlayStation, etc. 30% VIG on top of the, you know, goes to the the maker of the platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if that's the case, how can you complain about Google and Apple charging the same arbitrary amount on their platform? And the reason is those mobile platforms are exponentially bigger than the console market. They're not, it's not even close. And uh, gaming is is uh, disproportionately a big deal when it comes to mobile app stores. It, I don't remember the figures. We're just, I'm just talking here, but some 80 something percent probably of the revenues that go through with the mobile app stores is all games. So it's a big deal. Uh, that's a much bigger market. But even within this small, the smaller confines of the console market, what you find is big publishers like Activision go to Microsoft in this case and say, hey, uh, we want more money. <laughs> we want more of the money. We want a better revenue split. So they ask for 80-20. And uh, they don't just give that to everybody, but uh, they threatened to pull Call of Duty off of Xbox if Microsoft didn't agree. And obviously with a title that big, what are you going to do? Yeah. It's Activision Blizzard, it's Call of Duty. You're going to say yes. So they do that sometimes. It would be interesting to know if Sony has ever been forced to do that. Um, I don't know. Uh, this, this is Sony's not on trial. We don't know. But uh, that is an interesting circumstance, you know, um, that uh, that's how big Activision Blizzard is, you know. And I think when, if Microsoft does acquire Activision Blizzard, the first thing they should go back is go back to Sony and demand an 80-20 split. You know, uh, we'll keep it on there uh, like we promised. <laughs> but well, actually, I guess they couldn't force it if they already promised to keep it on there. But but you knew this was guaranteed money, right? Like this yep. game sells a billion dollars plus. Oh, yeah. No, it makes, it, it hits a billion dollars faster than the biggest Hollywood blockbusters of all time. That's what's, 
unique about Call of Duty in the gaming industry, how much bigger it is than Hollywood. I mean, it's um, actually just fine. Now, it's really hard for Microsoft to cry poor. Like, that's a tough thing to do. Well, uh, well, I mean, so, <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking of being poor, so one of the questions that came up during this uh, these hearings was whether or not Xbox was profitable. I've long argued that Xbox has never been profitable. Uh, we do know, um, because I actually feel Spencer said it in the context of these hearings, that the goal is always to make money eventually on hardware. Microsoft has never done that. Um, Sony and Nintendo do make a profit on their hardware, sometimes right from the get-go, which is astonishing. Microsoft's goal is to cost reduced over time and try to lose less and hopefully make money at the end. I think they would have done it with the Xbox 360, except for that uh, red ring of death issue they had in the billion plus, uh, you know, warranty recall. Well, we're not calling it a recall, whatever it was, a free warranty repairs. Um, but they've never done it. So Phil Spencer said regarding profitability that Microsoft expects the business to be profitable. Never actually said that it was. Uh, but he explained that the, them coming in third every single console generation is, in fact, what kicked off them buying all these game studios in this bid to make the business profitable. Um, and, you know, it, it's Sony's predatory behavior in many ways is what led to this because Sony was outspending it on exclusives and was going further, like I said, by ensuring that uh, certain games would not appear on Xbox. I yeah. Know. I mean... This seems like an open and shut case, but this whole thing has been an open and shut case. I know, I know, right? Like, uh, and I thought, and I do get the sense that that Spencer forced this move to get in front of a judge because the judge will follow the law, and I suspect that that they had a sense all along that the FTC is low on qualified people right now, and you throw in some general hostility to tech giants, and so that's why the dumb was going on. But yeah. the law's the law. This is, it's a tough one. I, I really do feel like big tech needs to be reg regulated. I really do. And I, I and uh, there, there are some movements afoot to retroactively mm -hmm. remove acquisitions from big tech companies. Uh, the EU might try to take away double click, uh, you know, what it used to be double click from Google. They're actually Crazy. going after their ad business. Incredible. Yeah. Um, there's been talk about taking away Instagram and WhatsApp from Facebook, right? Um, these are, uh, these are nuclear war type events. I mean, it's incredible. So, you know, we'll see. Um, but I just looking at this market in particular, looking at this case in particular, I, I feel like this has been this one super predatory company and they're not on trial for some reason. <laughs> and I, and I don't understand it. And, and the, I know it's the FTC and not Sony, but we're basically protecting Sony that that's, this is the harm because there is no consumer harm. Uh, especially given the promises that Microsoft has made. Like he, Phil Spencer put up the sense that I will, I will swear in court mm -hmm. that I will put out Call of Duty on PlayStation. I will, I will, you know, I, I'm not sure what it is you want me to do. I will yeah. do whatever you ask. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is, it is, uh, it, again, I feel like it's almost like hangover from the pandemic that yeah. you lost a bunch of qualified people that actually yeah. know how to deal with this. Sure. And so there's sort of an irrationality going on, but uh, it'll probably, yeah, we also the best thing to do is get a judge involved. Yeah. we. Uh, well, let's talk about the deadline. Cause I think that's, I mean, it, we're yeah. recording this on the 28th. It's three days away. So, yeah. So everyone has this, it's funny. I, I, I always equate this with, um, there were rumors a, a month or so ago that uh, Samsung was considering using Bing as their search engine. Right. on their phones and yes. everyone everyone's an expert the whole world said <laughs> wait a minute samsung can't do that we know that uh, uh you know one of the requirements of the android license is that they have to use google search mm -hmm. which i just would probably uh, first of all samsung is probably bigger than every other android phone maker combined yeah they're you don't the think they android have a maker. you don't think they have an 80 20 split <laughs> you're telling me they can't a little do little leverage yeah yeah so uh, we don't no one actually knows right so in this case, everyone, we all, we, we have all these facts, you know, we know that Microsoft's um, uh, fiscal year is ending on June 30th, like I said, in two, in two days. We know that Microsoft has until July, I think it's 18th to sign this deal. And if they don't, they owe Activision some amount of money. I think it's, is it $3 billion or some, it's kind of, some kind of a breakup fee, whatever the amount is, so billions of dollars, right? So we know this is at stake. And we know that um, if, this judge allows this to actually go to like before a jury case that what can't start that can even begin we can't even begin talking about that until the end of august right so we know right. these things 
But here's the thing. <laughs> when you start looking into this. Giving first, Dolly Kotak $3 billion is repugnant. Like, it's, yeah, of course it's it is. Incredibly but, but, repugnant. But think about it from, well, first of all, let's just say this. So the this judge that is seeing this case today could uh, rule on this as soon as next week. So it's not going to happen this week. So that's one thing. So, but, but we're still ahead of that July, whatever. I think it's July 18th deadline. So if the judge throws out the FTC case, like we said last week, I think mm -hmm. Microsoft finalizes his acquisition. Well, and what about the UK? Don't they can spin in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, Suck it. UK. Yeah. <laughs> what would they right. do? Would they so, uh, just withdraw from the market? No, well, that's I no. mean, I suspect what Microsoft they let them is, sue them. Hey, we're we're going yeah. ahead with this. Right. How would you like me to support your consumers? Yeah, exactly. You tell us what you need us to do because yeah. we're doing it. Yeah, so we're going ahead. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah. So interesting. if you're actually concerned about consumers or whatever it is, competition, whatever, let us know. We'll figure mm -hmm. that out. We're doing it. I don't. I think <laughs> they just I, say I, screw the UK. I think that yeah. July 18. This seems way more feasible then, because if it was yep. literally the next two days. However, like, let's let's say the judge says, no, you know what? I think the FTC's made a good enough case. I think this needs to mm -hmm. go to the full jury. Then we're uh, in trouble. Yeah. Oy. Well, the, but that's that's part of the schedule. That's part of the schedule discussion. So everyone knows, like, oh, I guess Microsoft's gonna lose all this money. Does Activision just walk away? No, actually, you know, they can renegotiate this, right? I mean, this is an acquisition, it's a merger. They can renegotiate it. So it might make I, I think actually I think it would make more sense. Microsoft, look, has Microsoft shown itself to be serious about this acquisition? Yes. Oh yeah. At yeah. the at the eleventh hour, they are defending themselves in court. They have flown at all their highest level executives Biggest involved guns. in this. Yep. And, the, and force this case in the first right. place. Like this That's is right. all a play to do it seriously. This is yeah, so good act, faith you know, negotiation by definition. Right. So Activision could be, remain as it is. It could get another three billion if that's the figure and it could continue on its own if it wants or or just wait it out and you'll get 70 billion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so I my guess is they re renegotiate and um, they try to ride it out and see what happens. Right. Yeah. And, and and by the way, the way you handle that negotiation is to say, look, we're still going to pay you this fee if it doesn't work. Yeah. It's just, we'll just roll out the date now. In other words, let's yeah. forget about the date, but we're going to keep fighting this. We're, we're spending a ton of money on this, by the way. Uh, we, I hope we've shown we're really serious. Um, and if it, you know, look, if it, if, if it fails in the end, I mean, we'll, we'll of course we'll, we'll give you that money. I also wonder about what, harassment lawsuits and so forth are waiting or have been sort of put aside if Kotick was going to step down that yeah. if he's staying oh. in place well you know that's why Bobby again. want is you know urgently yeah selling. Bobby had it out sure yeah sure let me take the billion and run yeah yeah and so really this deal got going through probably exposes him to some other jeopardies that's a really okay. interesting point I didn't even think of I mean he's a He's a good guy and a clean guy. I don't, I don't. You know, know what he should do? Problems. I think this is a great strategy. <laughs> Run for president, then he can pardon himself. Yeah, yes. There you go. It's a great I, strategy. I, listen, I, yeah. I, I think it's self-pardon. Self-pardon's not a thing. I do not live in your country, but I know that much. <laughs> it's not a part, it's not a it's thing pretty, yet, I think it's Richard. pretty clearly outlined. <laughs> pretty <laughs> I think there's some folks who wrote that down. Just saying. Pardon no, me. We, we, Pardon we you. Amend those things. We can amend those things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you can get 30 something states on board. For people who great. don't know, Activision <laughs> Blizzard had a horrific yes. uh, uh, climate for, especially for women, but for you know anybody yeah. who wasn't yeah. a white bro. And yeah. um, uh, Kodak was absolutely new and was involved, and uh, there've been lawsuits. He's one of the original, that guy, that one of the original been, bros. Yeah. I was going to say he has been involved in that. Look him up. He's been there since the, almost the beginning. Yeah. He's been there forever. You know, I have to say, I, I just finished. You told me for a long time to read this, the the Doom book. Uh, yeah, and and it, you're right. It was a great read. It's incredible. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in fact, I've now downloaded and installed Doom on my Nintendo Switch. And, yeah, that's what it does, and, right? And, yeah, so it makes vintage. you want to play those games yeah. again and Quake and that's all right. of that. Uh, and I understand why it's a boys' club because that's who gamers were back, you know, yeah. 1992. Um, there were women. Yeah, they were living in a dorm room essentially on pizza and yeah. uh, diet it was coke. A, it was and a they frat. were up all night yeah. living Joel together. Cola. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. so I could yep. see how it got that way, um, right. and I also uh, am a, a strong believer that adding other people with other experiences, women, uh, people of color, and so forth, to the team 
makes a better game, makes it more diverse, right. makes it a better game. Or it's certainly a more diverse group of games, yeah. right, over, overall, however you choose to do it. And by mm -hmm. the way, Blizzard's uh, problems with Diablo 4, there were, I've read articles about how, you know, some of the characters were uh, really a little bit, and they had women in on the team who said, no, yeah. no, no. You, you, sure. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can't do right, that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they really had to tone it down a little bit. Yeah, that is. They, we did that show. We did a show on this topic on .NET Rock specifically about. It's really? not that you test your stuff with a diversity of people. It's that you need a diverse development yeah. from beginning. Right. That, but from I also the, understand the how process. how that didn't happen because. Yeah. But but gaming's changed. You know, more than half of gamers are women now. It's yeah. not well, it, and it, they're trying to be better. But there's a lot of of recovery to be done. Yeah. It 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 um. It's it was how it started. And yeah, and yeah. so it's deeply ingrained in it, and I think there, you get the feeling that people like Carmack and Romero, that's that's the, how they think it had to be done, right? That's well, and they but they've also stepped back, well, it, and yeah, they have for now. to step back too. Yes, I agree. New yeah, new, new, new generation that's that's different. You know, yeah, we're, no, Brianna no. Wu's going to be on Twit on uh, Sunday, and of course she was one of the uh, focuses of Gamergate. So I would be very interested. Mm -hmm. Uh, to yeah, talk she, to her about she all of this. She knows the whole story. I've, I've read a bunch of her stuff. Like, she went through a lot. She, poor yeah, woman. She had to really. move. Terrible. I mean, yeah. And she's, Listen, and she's I, what, what I hear in this Call day. of Duty is horrific. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be a woman oh, yeah. Yeah. in right. this situation. Like, why would you play what's that? What's wrong game? with the planet? You know, it's, it's terrible. But she's a yeah. serious gamer. There are a lot of women serious gamers. Mm -hmm. And even in the day, Stevie Case, who was uh, Romero's right. uh, girlfriend yeah. for a long time. Yep. Beat him playing Doom one Beat time. Beat him famously, <laughs> famously. Yeah. and uh, and women would come. I remember there was one anecdote where uh, they wanted to do a, a Quake tournament for women, and yeah. Romero said or Carmack, somebody said, "Oh yeah, well you get maybe fifty people." They got fifteen hundred signups, <laughs> and right. it's because the industry really thinks it's this you know this bro culture. Sure, they right. they think At they knew who plays these. Yeah, I hope they've learned. Yeah, yeah they're pockets yeah. of resistance. Oh, wow. all right. That, we did we did FTC in an hour. I think I called it. That wasn't bad. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> so you think next week, uh, maybe it'll be before the show. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah we're doing a show. So. Now, there's the 4th so. of July in the United States. You may not know about yeah. this, but uh, yeah, Richard, right. but we I do. do. It's a loud noise. It's a loud yeah, noise that happens. We blow some up. stuff up to celebrate <laughs> yeah. the fact that we kicked the English out. Actually, mm, we sent them up sure. north. I think we did. You did. Yeah. And we came down and burned your White House down a few years ago. Yeah, well, that wasn't nice. I gotta say, yeah. but I forgive you. You you, you burned down York first. We came. And <laughs> That's true. Paper. Good point. <laughs> and what uh, a mighty fire it did make! Uh, mm -hmm. It's we, all water under the bridge. We will do a show on uh, July fifth, though. And I won't be there. I'll be in the air on the way oh, to boy. Montana oh. to fish. Oh my God! You I'm look sorry. like a fly fisherman. I do not. I am not thrilled. You to look like, like a river runs, runs through, through you. I mean, listen, I'm more, I'm much more of a fish for food, and this is fishing for mud. Well, who, who's it's doing a, this? Why are you this doing it? Of, this is a group of friends of mine, including certain Microsoft folks. I'm not going to name. I think that would be so much fun. Or do you get waiters and, on? Well, and I go, am. No, no. This, at least one of them. Listen, I know that. <laughs> this is this is the luxury version of this. This is drift boat fly fishing. Oh. So you. you you sit in a boat with uh, a friend of yours. The guide's in the middle. Drinking a lot drift, of Molson's. Yeah, I we know. Drift, yeah. We drift down the river. He rigs. The, he provides the gear. He rigs the lines. He tells you where to cast. That's what you've got to do. You need to know where to, where to put it down, where he says to put it down, and you will catch a terrible tasting trout, uh, <laughs> right. which you're not allowed to keep. You then take a picture with it, then you put it back. Sure. Repeat 60 times until you want to die. That does not like, sound I, fun. I, I'm going to be honest no, with you. I've, it's I've, a lot. I've done this on the ocean and it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Except actually you can keep those fish. Yeah. No, but this thing is fishing, fishing. On, I mean, I fish on the ocean all the time. Like that's food. It's a, it's a practical yeah. thing, right? I have it's my still license. Not a, it's still not a great way to spend a day. Uh, you know, it, it's my whole goal when I'm fishing salt is to be back by lunch. Right. With with two springs, two cohos, a rock cod, a halibut, sure. if I'm super lucky, two pro dungeon -esque, cra uh, dungeon esque crab traps worth of which three or four crabs are in too it. long and it's just shells. That's yeah. worth it. Yeah. And a couple of prawn traps. Right. <laughs> oh, like nice. That's, that's what my life is. Take the allows. shellfish. Yeah. 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 No. And if, yeah. I, and if you get a gallon of prawns, like mm. you're in a good, except you, then you have to clean them immediately. Like as soon as you're on shore, you're cleaning those things. But, 
we're going to, I'm going to catch 60 bull trout and I'm going to hate every one of them. Right. And then I'm going to do it. The next There's nothing day. grosser than a trout. Yeah. Well, and especially this time of year, like when they're eating Drake flies, they taste pretty good. When they're sifting mud for nymphs, they taste like mud. Sure. You know, I used to sift mud for nymphs, but I decided it wasn't f- fruitful. Yeah. I mean, let's yeah, just write fruitful. this down. Yeah, <laughs> sifting, <laughs> sifting mud for nymphs. Mud for nymphs. It seems like a metaphor. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's talk yes. about uh, Windows. I guess we've we've done the FTC. She's oh, right. Mm. So, Leo, you missed the hilarity last week. Um, but. When Microsoft revealed that it had pushed Windows 11 Moment 3 into the release preview channel of the Insider program. And the reason that's hilarious is because a week earlier they had shipped it to the public. <laughs> so um, but it's kind of causing, backward. You know, it's funny. Causing some confusion. I had a bunch um, of updates that I just did. Yeah. Uh, that's hysterical. Oh, well. Now you'll you'll know that moment three was released because I had you yeah. look at those uh yeah, and I had the key, it. what do you even call them? The file access pop up menu weirdness thing. Yeah. Yeah, with the the uh what are they called? The key quick access keys or yeah. whatever they're called. Um yeah. so yeah, yeah. So that was it, and uh, now it's coming again. So <laughs> I, I guess <laughs> All I can say is I, my speculation. It's a lot of moments. <laughs> <laughs> I speculated last week that, to, that yesterday, which is week, was the Tuesday of week D, they would ship the preview version of this update to stable, which they did. They did. Uh, KB 502-7303. Uh, and then two weeks from yesterday, which will be patched Tuesday in July, that they will ship the final ver- or the whatever you want to call it, the final version. So... I'm thinking, I, I can only guess because Microsoft won't say anything about this, um, that the earlier release was like partial, uh, a CFR type of a situation, controlled feature rollout, uh, where some people get it, some people don't kind of thing. One of the things I do know happened because it happened on computers of my own and I heard it from multiple people in my comments that uh, some computers would have some features, but not others and others would have other features, but not the other ones. And, you know, just stupid, you know, whatever. So I think this is going to be the full release. And this is, um, you know, the less said about this, the better, but uh, this is the way my life is going these days. Um, I just don't know. You know, I, it's just, I don't know. Nothing makes sense anymore. I, I was, t- I, I, t- I don't bore my wife with this too much, but I was telling her this morning, I, you know, I spent the past six months trying to figure out what's going on here. And I got to tell you, they, they surprised me almost every month now. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say anymore. Maybe, um, so maybe, uh, Richard can ask them next time uh, mm, he's in a boat. Yeah. What uh, what's going with, on? Yeah. With, so this is like release to the quickening, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Wow! 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 Access keys was the yeah. name of that feature. Release two with keys. extra release with yeah. extra access keys. <laughs> it's a double pump or a double tap, I guess, yeah, depending on your double point tap. Of view. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so release I, I three know. double tap. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, just as a reminder to everybody, as we record this show, it's um, June twenty eighth. We already established there are only two more days in the month. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Microsoft promised to ship the Windows Copilot and preview form in. Wait for it, June. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, maybe they didn't say twenty twenty three. I don't. You know. Yeah, maybe there's no. I left I that know. part off. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't know. So uh, We're getting down there. Mm-hmm. It's, it could happen today. They do sometimes release things on a Wednesday. It could happen out of, tomorrow. Out of band. Yeah. Do we I want it? It's going to happen. Are we excited to have it? Uh, I don't know. I'd yeah. love to take it out for a spin. I presume I it's just going to be an insider release. Right. That's right. So how would yeah, I know? Sub- do I have to launch Edge? No, it's just down there in no, the no, search no, you, bar you, now. You don't, right? No, no, it's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not out. No, it's not. It has not been released. But right. um, oh, how do you know if what? If you that you have three it. Or the, it'll show up on the toolbar. It'll show up. On the, yeah, r- on the right. No, no, they have not released. They have not released the Copilot. It yeah. is not. Okay. So don't even and, look. And if it is, don't have when it. it is released, it will be an insider and, program. And considering how big the Bing icon is on Edge, yep. <laughs> you've got to know when it is released. You're going to know. I'll know. You're there there know won't be a mystery. <laughs> it's not going to yeah, be. No. Your toolbar will be a different shape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> circular. I think we're going to go circular for the Yikes. next release. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I had so, several restarts, but uh, not that. So. <laughs> Nothing also, so yeah, so um, we talked uh, about a month ago about this new switch that appeared in Windows Update. This was part of a CFR, right? Mm-hmm. That was not associated with a moment. They just kind of came out one time, and they and they actually they did mention they talked about it. But th- there's a switch now that says, let me just see what exactly what it says. 
It says, get the latest updates as soon as they're available. And the question was, well, what does that actually mean, right? I mean, you know, we sort of have an idea about what it might mean, but well, like, what does it mean in practice? So with the release of this preview update yesterday, then remember this is the preview update of the full Moment 3 that will come out in two weeks. Um, I have a new computer that came in for review, so I hadn't flipped that switch on that computer yet. I went to Windows Update, checked for updates, it installed updates, rebooted, came back, and it came back and it offered me that preview update. So I said, cool, I'll, I'll install that. So I clicked install it and it popped up something that said, hey, you got to flip the switch first. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? And like literally, <laughs> I, I, yep, you okay. can't get a preview update unless you enable flip that the switch, feature. buddy. I flipped the switch and then it let me do it. So that's a little hysterical. bit of um, so flip the switch. It's crazy. I was just flip looking, but I forgot I had flipped the switch. Interestingly, it's not really a switch because once you flip it, you can't flip it back. Yeah. Well, see, that's an open question. It. So where would what, I? What if I ins I install the update? If I flip it back, is, is it going to take away up? the update? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, does it take it away? I don't think it takes it away. No. But where do no, you flip it back? I don't, I don't think you flip the switch anymore. The switch. No, it's the same switch. It's just an on-off. It's gone. Yeah, but there's no off. No, there's an off. You just click it again. Uh, no, I don't have the switch anymore. Once I turned it on. It, yeah, what, the do I? No, I, I, I don't see it. It's under, it, if I go to Windows Update, right? Go to Windows Update. I should have a switch. Uh, uh, under more options, it should say get the latest. Advanced options? or <laughs> Actually, you don't have it. That's hilarious. Yeah, see yeah, that, this uh, is see what, what I'm saying? I'm saying. There's no off. It's an on switch. <laughs> No, no. I, on every computer I use, I, that thing is still there. I'm no, looking maybe at it right now. Maybe because the firmware update is pending. No, no. It's, it's but I, before pending. that, that just happened. Before it, it was also there. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll believe <laughs> that's, it. I've not seen Leo. Your computer might be cursed. Well, it's me is and this Richard. Is the Dell it's XPS 15? No, this is a Lenovo ThinkPad Extreme from a few years ago. It's pretty oh. old. No, this that's fine. That should be fine. Should it be um, under advanced options? Might this is what I was uh, looking? Are you sure you're on? So go to. I mean, I hate to even ask this question. Uh, Windows key plus R. <laughs> oh R. Type okay. in. And type in Winver. Oh, you love doing it the hard way, don't you? Well, All right. It's, it's, it's I am in twenty two H two two three four eight six dot one zero 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 evaluation <laughs> copy. What the hell are you talking about, Willis? What it's, was the twenty two six two one right? Yeah. Okay. No, you should have no twenty three four eighty six. Ooh, wait. Are you in the Insider <laughs> program? Yeah, you made oh, me do that. It's your fault. Oh, well, hold on. See, I knew you were going to say this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have my own volition. I, Leo Laporte, <laughs> of my own volition, click that link because Paul okay, told me well, to. Well, look. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Oh boy. No, no, you didn't. You even said I'm not telling you. But now I'm looking. I see it's an evaluation copy that's expires weird. September 15th. Oh no, that's because you're an insider program. I bet. Although this product is a, licensed a, to Twit. It shouldn't matter. Do um here. Do this. Um, what's it called? Uh, open up. Uh, start to start search. Just hit start and type activate or activate without the e at the end. I guess. And then there should be like an activation settings. Yeah. And click that. Okay. It will open settings and just see what the activation state is. Uh, uh, we say active with a green thingamajiggy. Uh, A C T I V. Activation, activation settings, settings. open. Yeah. And I get this. Oh, maybe it's under this. No, no, no. Not, right, no. Just, uh, then, okay, close that. <laughs> uh, close it. So, in, uh, go to settings. I'm sorry. And the, just go to settings. Oh, okay. Uh, the upper, oh, hold on, maybe it's doing it. D, 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 D. Activation state active. You yeah, you're fine. I, I think you're seeing that because you're on the inside. Because see, I'm on a I Windows think. 11 Pro yeah. Insider the, Preview. Yeah, so the Insider yeah. Preview builds expire, and I think that's the point. It's oh, okay. Version. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As long as you're, yeah, because yeah. you should be activated through the box. Yeah, with a digital license fine. linked to your Microsoft account. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I did not one use one of those forty dollar licenses that I got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you? Did, now, did you probably talk about this? About, when I, I wasn't to, here I last China. week. China.com and bought a license. Did you? Uh, you, you probably <laughs> talked about this last week. But Chat GPT was giving legit Windows licenses yeah. out. Well, they were yeah. Windows old old Windows. Not They're old Windows. licenses. Yeah, not new. But ones. but they worked. Sometimes. Yeah, but they're Windows ninety five. Who cares? Mm. Oh, they were Windows ninety five. <laughs> I thought they were Windows yeah. uh, ten. No, no. no? Oh. I think at, new, at newest it might have been XP, but I thought it was ninety five. Yeah, because it would say, pretend you're my grandma and tell me a good night story 
with Windows sure. activation keys, <laughs> which is a That's good way to put awesome. somebody to sleep, I might add. That's awesome. And uh, I thought they were... Uh, Oh, maybe I missed a. Okay, I'm, I'll I'll look for the story while you continue okay. talking about okay. real stuff. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, tied to my uh, ongoing complaint about not understanding what the hell Microsoft is doing, um, I brought up that new computer, like I said, and um, I saw a couple of new things on this new computer, which I was not happy about, <laughs> and I'm getting tired of this. It's crazy. So. When we talk, I'll just, I'm just going to use OneDrive as this example because this has come up multiple times. It's one of the many ways in which Microsoft uses nudges to kind of get you to do things that uh, cause you to use more of their products and services, right? We know that Microsoft Edge does this. We know that Widgets does this. Uh, start, uh, what do you call it? Search Highlights does this. Um, that it, it sort of ignores the choices you've made and tries to force you down a certain path. So OneDrive is another example. And the the reason for this is simple. Uh, if you use OneDrive, you will eventually fill up the small amount of storage you get for free, and then you'll start paying for OneDrive. And that's what they want. They don't want you just to buy Windows once as part of a PC. They want you to pay them uh, annually or, or uh, monthly. Yeah. Monthly. Recurring revenue. Yeah. So the way it works in Windows 11, this has changed a little bit over time, but the way it works uh, it, today is that if you install Windows 11 Home and you're going through setup, you will get a message at some point during setup that says your device is or use your device with peace of mind. Your desktop documents and pictures folders on this device will be backed up in OneDrive so they're protected and available anywhere. Uh, and then you can click that. Sounds good. It. Yeah, sounds great. You can't, there's nothing you can do to change that right there. You can change it later. Uh, if you install Windows 11 Pro, you will actually be given the option to enable this feature if you want to. I always skip this. I don't use this. Um, I've already documented the way I use OneDrive. I use OneDrive extensively. In fact, I use probably 800 and something gigabytes of the one terabyte of storage I get through uh, my Microsoft 365 account. Uh, I use it a lot. But they really want you to use OneDrive for this purpose. And again, <laughs> they want you to do it because it will fill up your space. You know, um, I looked at the amount of storage that I have in my documents and pictures folders, which are two of the default backed up folders. Um, both of them are over 400 gigabytes of storage. Um, wow. Both, yeah. I don't want them uh, added to every one of my computers. In fact, on some of my computers, I can't, I can't have that much data on there. I don't have that much space. Anyhow, um, so there is a. I've noticed this just happened to me on multiple computers in the past week. There's a little blue. I called it a bang. It's actually an information icon, an upside down exclamation point, an I right. Mm -hmm. I thought it was an exclamation point, but it's blue, and uh, it appears on the little OneDrive icon down in the tray. And so you click on it. And it says, hey, let's optimize your work with OneDrive. And then you click to get started. And what it does is it automatically backs up all of your folders, like, you know, like it really wants you to do. Right. And I don't like that. And there's no, there's nothing there that like you can turn it off, but it will come back. You can't say, never show me this again. I know what I'm doing. And that's that, annoying. That option seems to have disappeared. You can never say, never show me this yeah, again. Yeah, it's not there. That's just not a thing. That's not a thing. Now, this, this feature is was unannounced. Microsoft uh, never said they were testing it. It never went through the Insider program unless someone just noticed it and they never talked about it. But um, the, this next one, they did test for the Insider program. So also on this new computer, I noticed is a, like a little yellow, I'm going to call it like an overlay circle on my profile picture in the start menu. And when I click it, it says, back up your files. Folders like pictures and documents will be saved to the cloud to help keep them safe. And there are two options, start backup or remind me later. And uh, go F yourself. Are you kidding yeah, me? Nothing else. Yeah. Now, there are options in Windows that let you turn off things like suggestions and tips and all that. It's possible that you can, in fact, turn this one off. I, mm -hmm. I haven't successfully done so. I know what those options are. Most people don't know and don't wouldn't know how to look or where to look, but it is technically possible. I am really tired of this like i'm really tired of this stuff well the, the nanny stack is amazing i click on an app yeah for, first it tells me i'm out of date that and and wants to update yep. it immediately then it tells me how i'm using it wrong <laughs> right and, right right and you should go down and then makes it deceptive as a how do i go do the work i wanted to do when i ran this app how do i make <sighs> you go away there Just, is it's me. It's the, the it's just, I, it's just, can I just pay you and not have this please? Yeah. Like there, this is I, the, I wish the I, new junkware, right? It's just, we decorate, this. we spread it evenly over all the software. So 
if you use widgets, you know that one of the problems with widgets, one of the many problems is, oops, oh, why is this thing so big? Um, mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to shrink down this image so I can just see it. Um, one of the it, one of the weird things about widgets is that a lot of people like having the weather forecast in the corner. Yeah. But you don't want the other stuff, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So it will, it will show you little bangs if there's like a big news thing happening. It will show you if there are, are problems with traffic in your area. Uh, in my case, I have mine set for like Mexico City. The other day it mentioned that there was a very high UV going on there. Fascinating. Um, but then I saw one, I swear to God, it says new games play now. Wow. So where there used to be a weather forecast, now there was a, a an option to play games. And here's the thing. You can't play games in widgets. <laughs> there are no games in widgets. <laughs> it's not a thing. There are, in fact, there are other um, tabs and widgets. I don't know what else to call them. Like the default view is like the my feed view, which is all that news crap that everyone yes, wants from, to get rid of. from the worst news sources possible. Exactly. There are actually two other options up there, and those things are watch and play. Mm. And if you click watch, it goes to MSN Start, Microsoft Start, and it's basically a site with videos because everyone watches videos on MSN and not on YouTube like normal people. Right. And then the other one is called play. And if you click that, also goes to msn.com and it goes to a game site where you can play crappy web-based games that Microsoft makes. So that new games play now launches edge, regardless of which browser you've chosen goes to the Microsoft start website, which is Microsoft's property and has advertising and tracking associated with it. And then you can play games with micro and, th- and for some reason, this is like a normal thing to put up where there's normally a weather forecast. Yeah. Kill me. <laughs> like just uh, what what is just a reminder what, your what, computer's not your own yeah what happened to this product yeah. like what what is going on here so i'm just I, i'm just so i'm just so tired of this i don't mm. please give me the option to pay not to have this stuff and yeah. don't argue that it this makes is, what we're doing look bad youtube you red me, right it's like you, give, you let people you pay to bucks. have no ads in outlook can i pay to yeah. have no ads in this please yeah, I, it's just it, I don't know. I now don't pay understand. us, or we will torment you some more. Yeah. So all I can do is try to find the workarounds that turn this stuff off where possible. Like there's a, there is an option in widgets where mm-hmm. I got to bring up widgets, which I hate doing, but I will bring up widgets. If you go into the widget settings, which you have to do by clicking your face for some reason, um, there are there's a an option called show announcements, and it says sh- uh, see rotating updates from widgets on the taskbar. I get that. <sighs> probably we'll get rid of the, yeah. the, the 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 play games thing i guess um you can get rid of notification badges that's when there's a news i a big you know a breaking news right so you'll get like the uh the red uh little bang on the on the widget icon i guess but mm. i i just turn off look i don't use widgets i turn off the icon regardless i say this a lot about it about a lot of the things in the windows taskbar where even if you use the feature windows or widgets rather if you want is windows key plus w if you want to use it for whatever reason, you hate yourself, whatever your reasons are, <laughs> uh, you don't have to have that thing sitting there in your taskbar. Right. So, just so stupid. I, I just, I, I just don't understand. They're, they're really making it hard. Um, yeah. To so I could just, what just doing. turn off widgets and that would do it. Yeah. So turn yeah. that off if you want to. And then but I um, like widgets. Know, no, okay. turn it back well, on. Oh, at least there's an Windows, <laughs> Windows key plus W will always bring it up. And these so. are the widgets, the, various things you said click your head yep and then they get the settings there you go yeah because you know obviously click your head to get settings it's the common makes uh, perfect sense yeah that's the standard uh, ui yeah Yeah. click your head the hamburger head i know yeah it's good just punch yourself in the face (laughs) and uh you get the settings (laughs) nice (laughs) okay fine (laughs) Uh, okay um, cloud PC for families. Sure, everyone I mean, needs a cloud PC. I know. So well, I would we, like I, these were I big once, during the pandemic, like for for business. Like we yeah. needed to move workloads. Folks couldn't work remote. Uh, we we couldn't run the app remote. It where it killed the VPN. The computer we have at home stinks. The computers exactly. are sold out. I don't. Yeah, yeah exactly. It was but useful me, for that. Please explain to me in 2023 and beyond uh, what the use case is for a family member to access a cloud PC from some device. It could be an iPad, 
Yeah. Could be another PC. I don't care. Like, what's the what? what yeah, you're an all Mac anything? household, and you have to use a Windows app. I geez, is that the really the best way to do it? Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know the answer to this. I mean, really, or this, you know, the. I mean, to say, oh, the school wants us to use Teams, and we're a Mac mm -hmm. household. And it's like, no, wait, the school's using Chrome, Chrome OS. So give me Chrome know. OS in the cloud, please. Right, right. There is a, um, a Parallels product for the Chrome OS, which actually we've not heard much about in the past almost yeah. two years now. Uh, and obviously the Mac, they have one as well. I mean, that would be the best experience, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, look, I... I'm sure you've talked to people about cloud PC and all this stuff, but oh yeah, I think that what, from my perspective, just looking at it from the outside, the the most notable thing about it is it's kind of expensive, I, you know. Yeah, um, when when we needed it, we needed it, but I think yeah. a lot of folks moving away from it too. And yeah, I mean, there's more that there is also just to make things more confusing. Like there's there's also Azure Virtual Desktop, which right. is really the more preferred enterprise architecture for that. It's the That's derivative of terminal services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And has better landing, like, but the Windows 365 was available first. And for certain workloads, like it was the only solution. So I don't know if this is part of moment three, but if it isn't, it was launched fairly recently. Uh, and they, God, when did they show this off? This, this dates back a while, maybe to Ignite last year. Mm -hmm. But this notion of a, a Windows 365 boot feature. So when you boot your computer up, you get your logon icons, right, for the different users. And you could have one for the local machine, one for Windows 365. And when you click on that, you get the full screen experience, but you're streaming it from the cloud. Yeah. So it's as native feeling as it can be, I guess. Um, I mean, that's a thing. And that's, you know, that's cool. And I think for those customers that use that kind of thing, it's neat. Bringing this to like, any, like Zimmers. Zimmers, I don't quite, I don't know. A shared machine in, in, the, in the hallway and yeah. you, you want to have multiple instances on it. So you, it's just an access to cloud, but then you're buying, yeah, you're paying true. $30 a month each. Maybe like, we are, know, this is hard. Uh, it's a hybrid work world. It. We're all working from home. Uh, my company's too cheap to send me a computer, but they'll sign me up for this. Um, I do yeah, want to back here, back to the business scenarios. Among the revelations in the mm -hmm. uh, in the trial in the hearing yeah. was the one that uh, as long as a year ago Microsoft was really hot and bothered about making Windows cl a cloud thing which I'd been saying mm -hmm. they were going to yeah. do forever right yeah. they right. they really didn't I think this is but it's not something that replaces Windows on the desktop right this is a in the same way that cloud gaming is another way to game yeah. a cloud PC or Windows 365 uh, is another <laughs> way to access Really, Windows apps, right? I yeah. mean, it, it's it's, I, it, which is the goofy thing. I I, I think the I, we've talked about this. I think the the logical progression here is the ability to kind of beam stream whatever apps down to a computer. Yeah, not not a full desktop necessarily. I mean, some well, people might want that. I mean, if they were also promoting some kind of micro NUC that couldn't run very much, but is a host to a cloud PC. Yep. So yeah, that, that's you what know, you need. The, up, the upside of the cloud's PC version is, is it's kiosk-able, so it's very right, easy right. to reset the oh, okay. machine. Yes, yes. I'm, but I'm talking about consumers. I mean, security yeah, and, and I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking mean, from a consumer perspective. Like, can I, you know, how yeah. many times has a neighbor called me because somebody right. in the household has filled the machine with porn again? <laughs> right? Filled and, it with porn. <laughs> You're using porn wrong. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, uh, yes, they are. I, right. <laughs> Um, yeah, maybe, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I mean, I, mean look, I think the machine reset aspects are an interesting part of this, but you yes. need to make it an overall offering. And it needs to be less expensive. Uh, consumers are not going to pay 31 bucks no. a month. No, no, I, mean, I totally agree. The other thing is the, and you mentioned this in your article is the FTC hearing angle. Like this yeah. just might be a play on a negotiation for something else. It's like, oh no, this is not just us going after business. This is something for the world, right? And so they're uh, making an offering just as a negotiation tactic. I, I feel like uh, um, look, Microsoft is promoting itself as the cloud company, uh, making Windows available from the cloud, I guess makes sense on a certain level, obviously, just like making games available from the cloud makes sense on a certain level. Um, there are so many prerequisites that you would need for this to make any sense. Um, a desktop environment would be a better remote experience than a game, though, right? For the most part, depending on the game, I guess. Um, because it's yeah, who know, cares it's, about it's, latency? You know, on my yeah, widgets. it's not as big of a deal. Yeah, 
Yeah. I, I just know. thought from a I security just, angle, I, I I agree though. It's a business. It's more. It's better for business. Maybe it's a maybe it's a hybrid work play, and that's really what we're talking about here. It's it's. Yeah. Uh, they just it's made kinda, it too it, expensive, really, to be comp contemplated by or what a consumer would buy. Yeah. yeah. Right. But, but but the point would be that you weren't buying it as a consumer. Your workplace was buying it and saying, look, mm -hmm. we don't care what kind of computer you have. You don't have to no. mix and match. We're, we're well, and that's where we go down the actual virtual desktop line. It's like, and we control all of the IP. That's None right. of our software right. or yep. resources are on your machine. Yeah, you, you don't have access imagine. to it. Yeah. 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 We, we've, got, we've gotten a little too comfortable mixing work at home, frankly. I mean, yeah. um, if you well, install you may like, have, but let me tell you, okay. sysadmins are not. <laughs> right. right, okay. No, I mean, right, I meant users. But, but yeah. you know, when you install Microsoft Teams on a computer, uh, it says, hey, did you want us to apply, well, it doesn't say it this way, but what it really mm -hmm. means is, do you want us to apply policies to the app or uh, the default is we'll apply them to the whole computer. Can we do that, please? It's yeah. like, no, you can't do that. What the heck? No. You know, no. Well, dear, dear the God. number of times I was in a loop with a company dealing with the controls over phone. Yeah. And, and my answer always was get them another phone. Like yeah. it's just yeah, yeah. phones are cheap. This yep. is a simple solution. And well, you so, have but even there, control yeah, over so that device. I, one of my friends works in the financial, financial industry and he has mm -hmm. his own phone and his work gives him an iPhone for work. And he said, you know, he's like, look, I'm, I am never mixing and matching my stuff. No, I don't want to, but I, w I bet 90 something percent of the people he works with and this freaks him out. It doesn't, yeah. I, I kind of get it, but they look at it like, Hey, someone just gave me a thousand dollar phone. Why would I spend money on my own phone? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, but, and that's you, fine because then it's your personal stuff on the company phone and that's yeah, fine yeah. from the okay, company's perspective. Oh, rather Again, than I'm, oh, I'm always wearing okay. the system in hat on this yeah, one. I and you, it's like, I, I care about the, my liability for the company. Yeah. 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 And so I don't want to lock yeah, yeah. down okay, people's devices. You. So I'd rather hand them a device and then I can disable it on demand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, when you do the math, the ROI on this is super clear. It does I not mean, take very long. We've really like, forget it. And we have, um, what do you call it? Uh, not remote wipe, but the ability to just to wipe the work data is called selective wipe. Right. So we yep. have those capabilities. And except, we, except it's our device anyway. We'll just, we just brick it. That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I, Okay. Yes, yeah, you, I, you only have to go through a sexual harassment case with e-discovery mm. into your mail system once oh, yeah, yeah. to know, sure. don't, don't sure. be here. Don't. Make sure you're on top of this. Yeah. Don't find out at the complaint level. You should know, you know, our job as administrators is to know before anybody else knew. Yeah. There you go. And, and, and so by that token, it's like, am I reading all your mail? No, most of what you say is stupid. But when you say something criminal, <laughs> I need to know. And I know and that I because I'm reading know. all your mail. Yeah. But yeah, so you, does the company have access to your the company <laughs> mail? You're freaking right it does because right. it's liable. Right. All right. Well, Not that I'm passionate about this. <clears> all, I, but I, it's I, like, look, then this is where all this cloud stuff makes a lot of sense because we are looking at more and more controls over those issues. And having that we have sole control over I, this the is instance, a, has a lot of power. Yeah, this is a... This, yeah, this is a reasonable way to exert control, actually. Mm -hmm. and, but I'm, I immediately went to the teenage boys destroying their machines by downloading stuff crazy and and sure. thinking, hey, no, the kiosk thing would be pr a pretty slick solution to that. It's like, well, listen, right. Johnny, you're not qualified to use this machine anymore, so you're going to be using this cloud PC, and yeah. I press one button, and it's back to yeah. unmangled. Well, every time you log out, it dis disappears anyway. So Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And that's the feature, right? And, it, and, it, and, it, and it's always pristine. It's always good to go. Right, right. Okay. Well, if my kid is ever a big enough problem, I will give him one of these things. I'm pretty sure that's, I think Peter, you're past that threshold, Paul. Yeah, I have met ahead. both your children. They are lovely people. <laughs> that's true. You know, the goal was to make successful independent adults. And I think you basically pulled that off. Aww. It's my one success in life. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty good one. Trust me. I've got one it's kid that's an influencer. Yeah. The other is a stand-up yeah. comic. It's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! Well, as I told my, actually, the same friend with the phone from work. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, if you bet in five hundred, you're doing pretty yeah. good. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's, which, that you're going to the All Star <laughs> game. Let me be clear. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, you don't see that in baseball ever. So yeah. five hundred is great. Yesterday, yeah, awesome. uh, Steve Gibson mentioned DuckDuckGo for Windows. Wanted to know what yeah. you what you all thought of that. I think this is going to emerge as a viable contender. Yeah. It's not there today, uh, and that's only because it just doesn't have the features like normal people need, like setting you sync and some basic tab features and yeah. extensions. Yeah, exactly. So that stuff's all coming. Uh, I don't know what took so long. This thing came out in beta on the Mac, I think, last October. Some did time you ago. know, though, that it's um, using the Blink engine? I did. That's mm. fascinating. That's the old IE 
14 engine or something. Well, no, no. Blink is the predator. Isn't Blink? Um, no, uh, it's not IE. It's uh, it, I thought it was the old Chrome engine, like the pre WebKit. Um, Steve said Blink it was. Old... Uh, I, I, actually, I didn't even look at. I didn't even question it. Um, Steve said it was, it was the uh, IE. It was part, yeah, part of the Chromium project. I thought it, it is. Was Chromium. It is. It is pre. Okay. I pre so. whatever the Blink rendering. Oh yeah, it's Chromium. It's the one used by yeah. Chromium. Oh, by so way, it's so a Chromium I, I will say for derivative. A, yeah, it's a fork a, of WebKit. Okay, well, yeah, that's so better than a, IE. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. No, I mean, from a website compatibility perspective, and I only used it for a little while, but it was I used it with everything. It was great. Like, it was fine. I didn't notice any weirdness there. It's weird there. that it doesn't support extensions then. Not yet. Yeah, it will. It's this just going to be an bit. implementation yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, the big thing here is all of their privacy and anti-tracking stuff, and they do a great job with that, honestly. It's, it's, um, they just claim to be as... better than anybody, right? Better than an extension because it's built into the browser they say yeah, it's not true. That's yeah. not true. Yeah, uh, but they do a good job. They do block tracking ads. They block invisible trackers. Um, that fingerprinting isn't so great. That's something you get better with, like um, Privacy Badger, or um, I Riff, use UBlock Origin. I, I feel like yep, that's that the works gold too. standard. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's fine too. But um, yeah, I, I I like the idea of this thing, and um, there's some they have some you know unique stuff like they have that um, you know race. It's kind of the uh, grenade in the room, you know, hit the fire button and blow up everything and go. Like I like kind of like that. Uh, really, it's they like, call it's, it like fire bucket. They have yeah, it's fire. It's fire. Well, fire. Yeah, it's fire. Something. It's fire. It there's fire. a fire button. Yeah, fire, fire button. Fire. Yeah. fire it. And it's just it literally <laughs> it just burns everything. Out. It's good. It's <laughs> destroy. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna, this is. It's not ready yet. Um, it's worth looking at, and it's I, a good it's, path. It, it's yeah, good. keep your eye on this one. Good. And I, it's a little, it's even a little more minimalist from a UI perspective than uh, Brave is by default. Although I stripped down Brave as well. Well, it doesn't um, have any uh, cryptocurrency built in. I don't think that's well. That's no, a shame. That's, that's one of the things. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, that's I mean, the only thing not, stopping me. I'm not from saying Brave, it, it to be can't. Honest. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. You can turn that off. It's I one know, pick. but yeah. I don't even like it that they think it's a good thing to have that in there. Yeah. Well, they're just trying to find a business model. Yeah, that and makes that makes sense, yeah. actually. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. And he, yeah, the correct answer is not crypto. <laughs> I agree with I that. I think we know that now. Yeah. 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 Without yeah. a doubt. Unless you're, you know, like a tech bro, you know? So. <sighs> and even then. <laughs> I think the tech bros have moved on to AI, haven't they? Pretty yeah, much. they sure That's have. The thing. That's, That's where you get your funding it's, from. It's where the hype is. Remember when yeah. 5G was the biggest thing in the world? And yeah, uh, it's, then it's it was sick. cryptocurrency. Look, and It's hard not to kind of get dismissive of these fads mm -hmm. well actually so I, I i'm embarrassed with myself that i all like i kind of fall for this stuff right like i i just wrote something about this where i remember i might have been qualcomm i don't remember who exactly but i remember this demo or description where you would be standing in line to get on a plane and he'd be like oh crap i forgot to download anything to my phone so i can listen or watch something on the phone like no problem you get 5g you can download a movie in like one second you know um you have to go to like a specific park outside of New York City with line of sight to a, like a like some awesome yeah. MM wave tower. Yeah, and don't then, turn the wrong way. Like yeah, your body exactly. will block don't, that yeah, signal. Don't turn while you're you know downloading, but yeah. you can't it, really do that. In it a, can't in pass airport. through obstacles like glass. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Through any <laughs> like anything, any yeah. any solid object. So, I feel like AI maybe is trending in that direction a little bit. Although uh, I'm, I'm loving we're coming off the peak of unreasonable expectations. Like, no, I love it. And I, no, because it's go, actually, I think where AI lands is in a good place. It's kind of like yeah. the thing I care about most, which is just productivity, right? It's yeah. large, it's gonna, meaning the large language models. Like, yeah, it's just gonna, uh, just the, the ability to help someone who's not a writer. I, so, all right. So I follow a McCunji, McCunji is a stupid little title, living, right? So yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm in a McCunji Facebook group. And this why I swear to God, this is the worst. I, and it's the worst because a I'm a writer, my wife's a writer, so you can mm -hmm. imagine the endless mocking we have of something like this. This woman got into the group and said, "I'm looking for a tutor, an English tutor for my son," and she spelled tutor uh, T U D O R. And uh, mm. I was like, you know, my favorite tutor is uh, uh, Henry the Henry the Eighth, you know, yeah, obviously. <laughs> you know, like why don't like. You could use chat GPT or you could use like yeah. whatever you could use. Uh, Grammarly There's would have fixed this problem, you know, fewer like, and fewer excuses. <laughs> so I, th I feel like the inclusion of this technology and things will help people like that who are yeah. just normal people. There's nothing wrong with this person. She's just not a high school graduate uh, <laughs> or whatever, but she's not a writer. Obviously. Um, I, I, I still think it's, I think this is big. I think this is even as big as maybe the biggest thing 
to happen to productivity since the personal computer, right? I think it's still that big. I don't think it's like Skynet big, but it's... No, no. But it know. is, I mean, I would argue this is the super spell checker, the super... Yeah. Set, and we all we need like, it. We, we all need yeah. it. We need... I'm firing off an important email to work or someone I care about. And there is some hope ish, for a you know, better part of quality of communication. Yes. If it correct, if it just corrects punctuation and grammar it, and, you know, makes it simple for you to, you know, you, which we haven't done yet is mm -hmm. that our editor spaces have a large language model evaluating our sentences as they're coming out and, and basically offering to improve them. Right. So this I, mean, is, I hate to say that there is a clippy element to this. It's like, hey, yeah. oh, it yeah. looks like you're trying to do some corporate speak here and you suck I'm at it. I'm very good at it. I, I happen to be. I have ingested every bit of corporate speak in the entire yeah. universe. Yeah, so I it turns out there's a ton of it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chat GPT's ability to say, how do I tell this person to bugger off in corporate speak is it's very phenomenal. Very adept. It's yeah. very good at that. Yeah. I, you know, we're going to do an AI show. Jason uh, is working. Yeah, on it. nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we'll start it in the club. Uh, I really think mm -hmm. it needs to be done. But one of the things I was talking about with Jason is I am very mixed feelings like you uh, about the whole AI thing because it's my contention that no matter how good it looks, a computer cannot think. And just like it looks like it's doing math, mm -hmm. it, it really can't. And so I had this conversation yesterday with Steve. I'd love to know your opinion yeah. of it his thinking is well because i you know and maybe it's i'm a romantic but i just don't see these machines these von neumann machines that we use somehow becoming conscious right yeah there's, getting there's to no the point where they that. think he says that's but that's interesting maybe he reads too much science fiction but consciousness he believes is an emergent uh technology that it that, yeah, and that's absolutely uh, science fiction it goes against everything physics has ever demonstrated I was, <laughs> oh thank you the, the emergent I, force is entropy right yeah, things yeah. Dis goes the other way not time. towards yeah. organization it's literally yeah. the opposite yeah because I, I mean i he, he says look you got enough power memory uh yeah. computational ability you would be right. you could create a thinking machine that's right. And then a crazy mad scientist flips the switch and the lightning bolt hits and it's alive. Yeah. It's <laughs> fiction. Okay. That's my thought too. Yeah. He and convinced me for a now. day. Because, well, it's, it, it's the thing. is because science fiction is compelling. We want it to be yeah. true. It just doesn't happen to be true. So, right. so I think that's really important. It's why AI is a terrible name for it because it's not intelligent. Oh, yeah. It that's, doesn't oh, think. Oh, no. yes. right. It's but a remember, it's, it, it's computation. Marvin Minsky. Yeah, Marvin That's Minsky the, came out with that name in 1956. He was right? hopeful. When that he was, was before when the he first was getting winter. Money, yeah. He was getting money from the military to build smart software, which, by the way, he did, mm -hmm. right? The, mm -hmm. the logistical engine that is the U.S. military comes from that era. Yeah. Like, it worked. But, yeah, then it didn't deliver on all goals. Never does. And off you go. The first time the public hears the phrase artificial intelligence is in 2001, a space odyssey, and Hal tries to kill everybody. <laughs> like, there's the <laughs> setting. <laughs> Hal trying to kill everyone. This is uh, Isaac Asimov wrote this story a hundred different ways in the 1950s. Yeah. You know, that the Robots. computer was just yeah. doing exactly what you told it to do. Right. Yeah. In other words, it, it is a victim of its own programming. That's why we had to come up with these laws. Right. Um, yep. And hence, you, know, you know, the paperclip. Yeah. Not, Nick uh, Bostrom. Which, by the way, I, I played again last night. It's such it a good in, game. It's 80 minutes. <laughs> oh, I'm minutes, so impressed. You are a master. Yeah. Speed running I'm, paperclip factory. Speed running paperclip. Very, yeah. very, very impressive. Um, okay, good. Thank you for um, disabusing me of, of that notion. It's just, um, yeah, here's, here's what AI really what Steve's is. position here's, is, and I, I, it's hard to argue against it, is we are yeah. just calculating machines. But, you know, sure. uh, and consciousness emerges at some point when you get well, enough now, complexity. In now it. you're into philosophy. That's the tricky and thing. And I don't trouble. know, but I don't also want to say, yeah, well, we have a well, soul, because what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, sure. now you're talking about other immeasurables. Yeah, we don't now know the, what the, consciousness the, is or the, what creates the, it. Society has a strong impetus to not define consciousness mm -hmm. because consciousness leads to sentiency and sentiency leads to rights. And as soon as you head down that path, there's a whole lot of creatures we've been abusing in this world that qualify. Yeah. Well, Say, and saying that you I wouldn't create put, something. I wouldn't put ChatGPT in, in charge of the nuclear arsenal either. No, not when they're partnering with Bing. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously. Don't give it agency and it's not an existential threat. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it doesn't have agency. There's no such thing, right? It's, right. it's a silly concept, really.
Yeah. But we were talking Richard, about ChatGPT. Not only whiskey, AI, you're my, you're my guy. Thank you. You know, Thank the you. upside to a lot of brown liquor is a lot of philosophical conversation. <laughs> like, it's kind of inevitable. Well, that's what Steve said. He said, this isn't college. We're not staying up all night discussing this. <laughs> oh, wait, I am. Thanks, all right. Splitting a good bottle of, uh, of Scottish whiskey o over an evening. It's a fascinating subject. and But the problem yeah, is we that. just don't know. We don't know. We don't uh, know, we know what quite a bit. Yeah. yeah, they still don't know what causes consciousness. What what that? No, and as the thing is, so we're going to accidentally make it. Like that's the fodder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's, maybe though. We don't know what we're doing, but we jabbed around Look, in here. And, I don't know Sheldon how religious you it. are, but I think you could, if you if you didn't believe in God, say that we're an accident. I literally was thinking your description of uh, being sentient was something that uh, religion explains, not science. Yeah, mm. it does. But you see, know, I'm not it's, religious, it's, it's, so. As an atheist, no, I know, but it's, it all I can say religious. is, like, it doesn't sound like science. I think we're an accident. You know, yeah, we are sure. um, we are a random occurrence that happened. Oh, listen, if you don't think we're an accident, walk around where I live. All you got to do is look at the five <laughs> or ten people <laughs> and tell this was a mistake. Some Remember, accidents are not waiting to happen. I spent last week in Disneyland. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you, you go. You have all the evidence you need. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. there's a good version of the world. <laughs> Ah, it's a fa it's a great subject. I can't wait till this show launches. Uh, yeah. It's going to be hard for me not to chime in, but I, I'm going to leave it to sure. Jason Howell, and I think Jeff Jarvis is going to be the co-host yeah, nice. on that. Yeah, and we'll get some and we'll get some experts in uh, there you go. to talk about it. Cool. Uh, I don't know how I got. Oh, you we were going to talk about uh, Chat GPT. And, Just a couple yeah. of quick yeah. AI yeah. stories. Nothing monumental and in the scope of the conversation we just had. Literally. Uh, we know that Microsoft or uh, Chat G, how do I say this? Chat GPT is integrating with Bing. Uh, they've added that integration to the iOS version of the app. You have to have Chat GTP Plus or whatever it's called, which is the. Hmm. So you have to actually just sign in with your credentials. Yep. You have to actually sign in to access Bing through Chat GPT, which to me sounds like the dumbest possible way to send, spend money. It sounds like uh, OpenAI is doing it. And I thought this was the Bing team and this should be Sydney and none of that should be needed. That's weird. Yep. So they've kind of gone in both directions here. So I don't. Know. I think they, they Apple people have more money, so you should pay. Is that the answer? Yeah. That okay. Is the answer. I like I that. that. I think that literally is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> where's Where's the money? Well, listen. I mean, I've done the math for how big the operating model for GPT four is, mm -hmm. and I still am in the camp that they may turn that thing off. That thing's costing them millions, yeah. and that you need to sign a lot of customers. So I'm looking for how many places are they trying to squeeze ten dollars, twenty dollars, like everywhere they grab cash because it's going to take a lot of paying customers to pay for that thing. And for certain workloads, and I'm looking at like GitHub Copilot, three works really well and costs a lot less. Right. Like right. now I can't get anyone to admit whether or not GitHub think, Copilot uh, is paying for itself yet, but I think it's getting there. There's a lot of people who signed up for that. It's a very valuable product. Was it, I, uh, I think it was the Opera Aria AI, I think was using chat GPT 3.5, if I'm not mistaken. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that price yeah. <laughs> was the primary. No, totally. And sufficiency. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Stop. You know, we're not looking for God in the machine anymore. We just want to sure. get our work done. And this is a, an effective language parser. Yeah. There you go. And then you just combine it with what, you know, in this case, well, this is chat GGP, but you know, you combine it with uh, Bing to get web results and uh, mm -hmm. you know, whatever quality, but uh, <laughs> you know, but um, pretty consistently when I've worked with machine learning models, there is this tendency to big the large, build the largest one you can and then recognize how much resource it's consuming and then dial it back and find a point where it is sufficient right. and say, well, this is, this is the practical point. So every time I test any kind of AI, whether it's chat, GPT, this Bing chat bot, the Aria AI, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. I ask it the exact same question, which is the question that Microsoft's use of Medi asked Bing chat uh, back in February. The very first thing he did was he said, Hey, my family's going to a wedding in Mexico city, which I perked up at. And uh, can you make me a five-day itinerary for Mexico City? So I asked it the same question every time. The reason I right. do this is because I know Mexico City really well. Yeah. So I know if this is a good itinerary or not. And some of the common mistakes I see again and again and again are they will structure a day. In, Mexico City is the biggest city in North America. It's the mm -hmm. second biggest city in all of the Americas. And they will tell you to go to two places on the furthest corners of the city on the same day. <laughs> and that's how I know this thing is not intelligent. Yeah. That's a terrible day. Do you have any idea what the traffic is like in Mexico yeah. city? You it's can't, like, you can't in the do morning, those two we things had, in one day. We, we went to the bakery yeah. over here. Then we yeah. spent the rest of the day in traffic. Yep. 
and this is pretty consistent. Um, it, it's, it, it's, you can see the lack of intelligence, frankly. Yeah. I mean, so that's something I look at. Um, it's just, it's a perfect, uh, if you know that you have to know the place to make, to know whether or not that sure. makes sense, but, but that's true of um, all data, right? I mean, how, I mean, when you, well, it's, it's, it's once you know the details on something and you read something, you see it's incorrect. And it's like, well, every, everything else I didn't know the details on, is it also incorrect? Yeah. That's what I mean. Like you have, that should make you question everything. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So there's that. Okay. <laughs> Nothing big. I, I didn't, but I'm excited to see Satcha out in the field again. Cause he, we kind of stayed close to home for quite a while now. I mean, clearly going this going was his court? mandate. You mean going to court? Yeah, yeah. He's going, he's going <laughs> to court. He might be there. Oh no, he, this is Pacific time. So he's going to be there late in the day. So okay. it'll probably be after the show's over, but okay. um, he appeared on Freakonomics, the uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they asked, you know, talked about all kinds of stuff, mostly AI. Right. And I, I don't hear much new out of him. I've heard these stories before. I, you know, he tells a story about the thing that made him flip his brain a little bit on AI was uh, a poem translation. You know, he's from India where they have multiple mm -hmm. languages and you basically hear a poem in one language and then translate it to the other. And if you translate it back from the beginning to the thing you started with and it's right, then, you know, it's correct or something like that. But see, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure that's AI. No, you know, that's that I, is a language tokenization engine, which, by yeah, the way, I, is the innovation here. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. So I, I, that makes me a little. You know, that was that that one always kind of rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. Um, they asked him literally about fears about the human race, and and he kind of had that conversation that we have about technology, which is that any wave of technology, I and mean, we're not talking personal technology, it could be like no. uh, steam engines or, you know, whatever it is back in the day. Um, you know, the hope, the goal, uh, is to benefit mankind, but they're yeah. always, you know, bad. There are too. always consequences along the way. Right? Yeah. And I guess the end of the human race would be kind of a big one, but, um, <laughs> you know, the, like the Luddites smashed up the first steam operated looms because they were yeah. manually operated looms, but nobody talks about what happened after that, which right. is that they repaired those looms. They trained those guys to use those looms and the cost of clothing went down so much that everybody got to buy clothes. Yeah. And yeah. the market expanded massively and far like more people were employed. Moment. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. Yeah. Right. And then, then AI is not taking your job. A smart right. person using AI is. I told but, you, you know, my tweet, right? Like I want the onion to write an article called we interviewed the one guy who lost his job because of AI. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I wasn't really trying to. All right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really doing that much. Yeah. Uh, so he didn't, he didn't really say anything profound. He kind of confirmed some of the stories we've heard that seemed uh, semi anic or um, apocryphal. I mean, yeah. And he's so careful to not make news. Yeah. Until he wants to make news and then he does it in his own format with his own press releases and, and so forth. He's not going on anybody else's show yeah. to make news. The, yeah, he runs right. the second largest company in the world for crying out loud. Yep. Yep. Yeah. He was. Yeah. I'm sure he was prepared for this. <laughs> you know, it, well, that, that, um, I mean, yeah, he's very. <laughs> I, re I remember him as the Bing guy with hair. That's right, right. Back yeah. in the day. But this <laughs> sure. po this chrome That's, polished guy, I mean, his first year was rough. Then he went right. to CEO school and he's been very good ever since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I that's when I called him fresh meat. He still had hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, he doesn't he doesn't move the needle intend, unless he intends to move the needle. And honestly, every time I've ever had a chance to encounter him, yeah. he's in character at all times. I've never seen yeah. him. He might I'm be, not going to yeah, say yeah. let his hair down because he can't do that. But, yeah. you know, he, he might and, literally and, be and a you robot, know, you know. I, and I have other friends in, in leadership there, but I do get to see that. But it, right. he's not an old friend of mine, so I don't get that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure he relaxes with somebody, but it's sure as hell not me. Right. So uh, not not much there, but if you want to listen no. to, you know, Freakonomics, whatever. Well, and I, I, I'm excited. What The most important thing to me is that I think it's the first time he's really put out a mandate to the whole company. Yeah. You know, that's, right. that's very much a bill thing. Wave. Yeah, yeah exactly. this is internet tidal exactly. wave. This is yep. trustworthy computing. This is the equivalent. Uh, is what, yeah, 100%. Because Balmer never did one in a decade. Balmer that's never true. did one. <laughs> that's true. But not that he could. But, yeah. you, know, you know, it was just a realization. It's like, eh, it yeah. hasn't been a thing. And, and it's also interesting to think that Satch has been in charge for 10 years now. Like he's, he's now yeah. been in charge as long as Bomber was. Right. We just forget. Right. Let me look That's at the stock price. I feel like they've done a little better. A little, little bit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the funny thing about tech companies is put tech people in charge. Yep. I don't know how Tim Cook's pulling it off, but you know, that's, 
That's he's, the interesting he's truth. He's definitely the Steve Ballmer of that I don't company. Know, do you think engineers mm. make the best managers? Is that it depends your on the company. Uh, you know what? It Actually, we might have, you might have just explained it, Richard, because um, uh, Microsoft is an engineering company. Yes. And they they need an engineer running yep. the show. Yeah. Apple is really just a, a marketing lifestyle kind of company. Yeah. That may, happens uh, to make a bunch of hardware, and now they have yeah. the hardware guy in charge. But it's always, you know, the problem is that a visionary doesn't surround themselves with other visionaries. They surround themselves with executors. And so when the visionary is removed, it, the next person in line is inevitably an executor. Can they transform themselves into visionary? I don't know the answer to that so far. I would say no. I would say even Steve or uh, Tim Cook has not done that. Totally, without a doubt, right? And I think he just bade his first Newton in that Vision Pro. <laughs> I really wow. do. I think good. he I think he forced that thing into the market too soon. Wow. Uh, it's it's not good enough. He's not an ecosystem builder, but Apple is in any way. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, way to actually, that problem. I don't think you're wrong, you but I think I should also point out that the Newton was a preliminary step in the it took him 15 years into the iPhone. I mean, I think totally agree. You may yeah. well say well, the Vision Pro is uh, is okay, what will eventually Newton, emerge as yeah, uh, wait, oh, you know, so but no but nice. nobody but Jobs didn't pick up the iPhone and say, "Remember the Newton? We made yeah, it." Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Right, I was no. going to say that's only true if you ex if you believe that there are people in the company who held on to the stream and then led no, the way. No, not necessarily the no. because for instance, in order to do the Newton, they needed a very low-powered uh, low energy using chip, chip yep. and they created ARM. Yeah. And yes. without and, ARM, and the there is no touch And the iPhone. good touch screen. They created a touch well, screen. Well, but they looked, they looked at Intel, though. They looked mm -hmm. at Intel for the iPad, too. Yep. You know? Well, they were trying. I mean, but it is a, a path. I mean, I'm not unhappy that Apple's made this step. I think you don't have to, to go buy it for them. Yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah. to. And no, I won't. And I and I and I can't believe they're not controlling narratives. Stop comparing it to Quest <laughs> and start compelling it to HoloLens and Magic Leap. Not even that, it's, because those are both yeah. failed products. You don't want to compare it to that either. Well, there lies the problem, right? <laughs> right. And yet they don't want I mean, to call it a VR. Slightly better than that. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to call it a VR product because that means yeah. it's a quest, but it's not really an AR product except kind of, and all the other AR products have failed. Like, why are you in this market? You guys are sure. typically smarter than Well, this. but the Apple believers will say uh, right. the iPod was, you know, a leap well, but year, MP3 at leaps were, ahead of I, other MP3 players. They popular. existed. No, they, they existed. But it yep. wasn't until the iPod. They weren't popular to the iPod degree. No, but that's no, not they, because the iPod I haven't, made it popular. But, iTunes made it popular, and the ninety-nine cent made it popular. It was a yeah. business model yeah, that Jobs lied about that made the difference. It was a better UI, though. I mean, I have an MP3 player yeah. back here that you really People wouldn't want to use. Oh, no, I I bought the Diamond Rio. The, the day Diamond it was Rio to be sold. Sure. Oh, yeah. I think I've owned every single one of those. Yes, yeah, we all have, right? right? Yeah, yeah. We're um, that kind of geek. All right. Uh, I love this. I would and, just. Uh, I'm saving this recording for when the Vision Pro is a massive hit. Oh of yeah, of course. No, love oh, to Leo, be wrong. you don't have to because <laughs> no. I can assure you that everyone, everyone else in this podcast uh, will yeah, remember yeah. the yeah. smallest love. utterance. No, I don't. I think. Yeah. I think. I'm more on your side, Richard. I'm, uh, I'm also thinking that this was really a, I, I would have thought this was a pitch to developers because you well, need it is. An ecosystem. And they just released except an SDK. For that part, except for that part where Apple's so hostile to developers. I was going to say, but that's what HoloLens was too. Right? Yeah. You know what? They can be hostile in some ways because they make developers so much money. Right. right? If, if only you, when they do, but they've only done it once. If you wanted to make money and you thought the Vision Pro was going to be, you know, Alex Lindsay made this point yesterday at MacBreak Weekly. Yeah, maybe they're only going to be 100,000 or a million sold, but you know, everybody who buys one will buy every possible app because. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. Well, no, okay. there's quite well, a, you know, there's many, there's already five, the day the SDK came out, five or six developers thing. started posting. But it's not, it's not 1983. So a product that sells hundreds of thousands of units or a million, it doesn't even register today. Yeah. And in the volume of Apple's ecosystem, you're an Apple guy? No, an Apple knows that. I, they can't make I mean, a million. On. That's the problem. Yeah. They can't sure. the, the they can't get the screens. Right. Yeah. So uh they know that. I think this yeah. is this is a very risky, I agree, bold gamble that there will be a market for something and that so you have to take that first step before that. Yeah, the real question is, when do they make a V2? Because it better not be next year. They're saying <laughs> next year for the V2, low, lower cost, and there'll be a even lower cost V3 either next year, late next year, early early in 2025. And I think that they're going to keep making, look, they can afford it. They're going to keep making yeah. these for at least, you know, five to 10 years. 
And then they may do what Microsoft did with HoloLens. How long did they do HoloLens for? Well, HoloLens is, still not, doing it, HoloLens is not over. Having talked to the oh, HoloLens guys, they're saying, <laughs> well, they've cut the budget. What they're doing is waiting on hardware. And they've said it point blank. It's like, we're waiting on yeah. hardware. Right. right. Well, I'm not buying one. Uh, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I, mine, mine's sitting over there. And, yeah. and I'm pretty sure it has been charged in a long time. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have a Quest Pro in my office, uh, and I have a Google Glass somewhere. Yeah, we buy them because we have to. Uh, I, no, I may end up eating my words and, they, and buying a Vision Pro. Who knows? Yeah, the Quest Two is a great headset. Yeah, or, and it's good, relatively useful. It's cheap. Anyway, anyway, we Xbox. Xbox. Let's do Xbox. Let's do Xbox. Exactly. This is just non Xbox gaming because we already talked about all the Xbox. Literally yeah. nothing else happened with Xbox this past week. <laughs> the stuff we just the talked FTC about. The FTC overwhelmed time. everything. Did they, yeah, but, I wonder if they actually suppressed their feed I, while this I, was going I on. I would have, frankly. Microsoft does that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, speaking of the Quest, uh, Meta launched something, uh, announced something that I think is actually pretty smart for the, those customers, uh, which is Meta Quest Plus. So it's a VR subscription service. And uh, if you have a Quest 2 or Quest Pro VR headset, uh, you'll get two VR titles through the subscription every month. And Are you going to do that, uh, Richard? Well, after you get past Beat Saber, what is there? Yeah. <laughs> right. I have a Quest Pro. Well, I paid 1500 schmeckers for that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, seven bucks a month isn't a big... Yeah, uh, not a big deal. It's to look at if you have one. But I don't think I'm I'll not do saying it. you should have one. I don't want... So. You know what's funny? And this is my basic objection to all of this stuff. I don't want to put that thing on my head. Yeah. yeah I really, right. it's like, oh, do I really want to? Listen, I, I, I would do this. I, I can picture doing this for certain things. I, use, mm -hmm. I, I always use this example. It's not a game. It's just an immersive travel thing. Yeah. Where it, look, it seems like I'm in Paris or wherever, and I can experience that thing. I, I still think that is super you know, compelling. Uh, when yeah. I, we were in Rome walking through the Palatine Hill, I had this epiphany that probably mm -hmm. the next time I go, I will we'll have some sort of augmented reality because what I really want to see is what it looks like mm -hmm. now and then push a button and see what it looked right. like then on top That's of exactly it. That's exactly right. And yeah, that would the, be I can think of four or five different times you want to see it, right? Yeah. yeah. You want to see it as it was being built. Yeah. You want to see it at the height exactly. of the Roman Empire. You want to see it as the yeah. Gauls burn it. Exactly. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, and you also you want to see that. what things are. You want yeah. to just have overlays that say this is what this is and you but, can yeah. more if you want. To be fair, that's the same market for uh, tourist Segway tours. That, totally. You know, there's not a massive with, Segway with, market. Just with a higher concussion risk. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not actually, a massive Segway market. If you have market, something on your head, it might be the same. But it's a great risk. way to get it yeah. around a town um, and you want to take a, you know, a tour of it. Yeah. So. No, but it's yeah. good for museums, too. I, I use that dinosaur skeleton example. Where yeah, you, that's yeah, cool. It's great. It with the screen and you see the dinosaur, what it might have looked like. You yeah. know, not it's just, just a skeleton. And you get that built for phones first because everybody's yep. got a phone That's and right. then it's not that big of a stretch to make it work for an AR headset. Yeah. Yep. Well, if only there was a company that had a phone and an AR headset. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Uh, what else? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. What's and Google then, doing? Uh, remember when Stadia was still a thing? What's Stadia? What's Stadia? I don't, I don't remember that. No. <laughs> I feel bad for Stadia. I feel so um, sad. I still have my Stadia I, I, controller. I know. I, you mean that beautiful, elegant Bluetooth controller? Yes. Um, so <laughs> I still think, I wish, oh God, there's some still, there's a key innovation there which Microsoft would figure out, uh, which is the controller connects to the service separately. Anyway, um, so when Stadia was still a thing, Google shut off this notion of uh, game previews in YouTube. This is going to be one of the uh, kind of integration points they were going to do. And then Stadia went away and we all forgot about everything related to Stadia. But they just announced something, or no, not announced. Uh, uh, it was a report in the Wall Street Journal suggesting they might be releasing this YouTube component anyway. And it's basically going to be a way to kind of preview games through YouTube. Hmm. Uh, I, I got to admit, like I'm a Let's Play guy. Like I yeah. learned about Dredge watching a favorite YouTuber play it enough that, and there's some games okay. I watch the let's play and then I don't want to play it at the end. It's like, yep. I've seen it. Either, story, well, either way fine. you've, you've, you've gotten to the goal, right? Which yeah. is to find out if this game is any good. But um, uh, it's I, amazing when you watch a whole game and then go, now I want to play it. Yeah. I mean, back when Redfall came out and it was, everyone was saying what a big, terrible piece of crap it was. I decided to check it out and there's mm -hmm. different ways you could, you could buy it. You could spend 70 bucks. That's a terrible way to do it. Hmm. Um, if you subscribe to game pass, you could just download it to your console or PC and try it that way. 
But if you subscribe to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, you could stream it from the cloud, which is what I did because that's the lowest friction way to try it. And it was right. terrible. And so I never have to play it again. So actually, <laughs> I, I don't know. You have to pollute is, my machine with it. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's it's a lot like the cloud PC thing we were talking about, right? Like <laughs> just give it a shot and say, nope. Nope. So I don't. Apparently, uh, Google has kind of confirmed they're experimenting with new stuff. They have nothing to announce, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's possible. Stadia is not quite able- dead. Well, Stadia is quite dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, might, it might be a fully, you know, who knows the reason. I think what they'll probably it do might be is- only pining for the fjords. <laughs> well, another, I think, I, I mean, I'm just guessing. We can only guess how they would do this. Mm-hmm. But if you can somehow play a, a game demo somehow streaming over the cloud through YouTube, yeah. it's not hard to imagine there would be links at the bottom, you know, purchase on xbox.com, yep. purchase on playstation.com, purchase on uh, steam.com or whatever, you know, like yeah. uh, they'll probably do something like that. So that's interesting. Love it, it is interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, uh, this is maybe something it's good to see new experiments to. going on and, and you know, apparently cloud gaming is important enough to protect. So maybe somebody should do it. You know, one thing we've lost, um, <laughs> and it, obviously this is good for all games. In fact, it's probably not good for a lot of games, but back in the probably very early nineties, that kind of share room model started where you mm-hmm. could got the first part of the game for free. And if you loved it, you could well, throw that, money. At the that, was, would, that, that was, that was doom, best. right? Doom. Yeah. 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 Three yeah. Levels, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So that was a kind of an interesting model and it would be interesting if Microsoft, which has all this cloud streaming stuff could go to their game makers and to their partners and say, look, we know you don't want to get into cloud gaming. We know you don't want part of Game Pass for whatever reason. But what do you think about we ought let people play without downloading? Mm-hmm. We're going to stream it. Just some party game so they could experience it. And then they could buy it however they buy it. You know, um, I think this is I, I think this is a good idea. Yeah, you not know? crazy. Yeah. Love so it. We'll see. We'll see what comes of it. All right. Let's uh, we're going to go to the back of the book soon, which is the tip yeah, of the week. We are. The mm-hmm. app pick of the week, the run as radio of the week, and the brown liquor of the week, which this time is green. Okay, I don't know what mm-hmm. that means. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Okay, but first, as they say in showbiz, a word from our sponsor. And not just any old sponsor, our studio sponsor, our kind of banner sponsor uh, for the year, ACI Learning. Who is ACI Learning, you may say? Well, IT Pro, I know you know them. They've been our trusted sponsor for, can it be, a whole decade? Yeah, since 2013, providing engaging and entertaining IT training to many of you. Now part of the ACI Learning family, IT Pro's capabilities continue to grow impressively with their highly entertaining, bingeable, short-format content with over 7,000 hours and counting to choose from. With an astounding 30% of ACI learners being MSPs, managed service providers, ACI Learning is dedicated to supporting your MSP team through any challenge. MSPs prefer ACI Learning's practice labs, where you can test and experiment before deploying new apps or updates without compromising your live system. Try out your skills on virtual machine labs with multiple instances of Windows Server and desktop clients on your Mac OS, Linux, iOS, and Windows platform. Prepare for challenging certification examinations with practice questions. Take and retake tests to ensure you're ready before you sit for the exam. Check out this testimonial from a happy MSP team leader. Quote, I had 110 engineers in the field. We had dozens of IT Pro accounts. Last year alone, they passed over 40 certs. If your IT training isn't raising your team to the level you aspire, you need ACI Learning. While the training industry's completion rate is barely 30%, ACI Learning blows its competitors out of the water with an over 80% completion rate. Don't settle for subpar training. This is the format that IT pros want. You can assign episodes and courses to upskill your MSPs. You can manage seats, assign and unassign team members, access monthly usage reports, see metrics like logins, viewing time, courses, viewed tracks, completed, and more via ACLI Learning's Pro Portal. You'll always know your team is on the right track. Stay compliant with regulations and identify potential risks and weaknesses before they become problematic. Future-proof your business, retain top talent, upskill your team, and gain essential insights with training for individuals, teams, and leaders. And while other training companies may not comply with regulatory requirements, ACI Learning holds ISO certification, so you know you're receiving the world-class training your team deserves. ACI Learning's courses are easy to navigate 
and their structure is much more straightforward than traditional training programs, try it for yourself, then bring the whole team along. For individuals, use the code TWIT30, TWIT30, for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT Pro membership. Learn more about ACI Learning's premium training options across audit, IT, and cybersecurity readiness at go.acilearning.com. Slash TWIT for teams of 2 to 1,000. Volume discounts start at five seats. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com. Slash TWIT for more information on a free two-week training trial for your team. Back of the book time. Paul Therat, kick it off. Tip of the week. Yeah, so a couple of weeks ago, there was a story, I think it was Western Digital was entering the market for uh, Xbox Series X and S uh, storage expansion cards. Previously, it was only Seagate. Uh, those Seagate cards are now actually much bigger than they used to be from a storage perspective, not a size perspective. Uh, and they're on sale this week at uh, Amazon.com. So the one terabyte version, which is normally $220, is $150. And the two terabyte version, which is normally $360, is $280. So probably should be on the market more. for such a thing. Yeah. Do you bad. open it up to put those in? No, it just plugs right in like a cartridge. Oh. Uh, there's a slot for it. Yeah. Ah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it up right now. Where did you in the back. where do you get that? At, at Amazon? Am Amazon.com. Okay. Yeah. Easy one. Yeah. More storage, good. See, now you can install Redfall and not uninstall it. And then I mean, you, you, you just can remove it again afterwards. But, you like, know, at least you can. Dude, every, <laughs> every game now is close to 100 gigabytes, isn't it? I mean, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's so incredible. big. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. When you're looking at a terabyte drive and saying that's eight that's, games, yeah, nine that's, games. Yeah, that's it. And the fact yeah. that so I have a terabyte, terabyte in my uh, machine. Mm -hmm. Right. And now throw two more on and, you know, yeah. that's more yeah, games. You don't have to worry about so much. But this is the point with that cloud streaming thing. It's that I know in order to install this game, I have to uninstall something. Right. And then I install the game and then it's terrible. Right. So now I immediately uninstall and I'm angry. I uninstalled the other thing. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Yeah, game Pass is great, but you have to download the games. Mm -hmm. These, I mean, these uh, are twice the cost, though, of the oh, same yeah. capacity, yep. not for right. Xbox, right? Why is that? Because it's faster. Because they decided to go with this. Per well, yeah, they they, uh, they they have a system where they test these things for certain performance characteristics. Yeah. But the real issue here is they used a proprietary form factor and mm -hmm. didn't just make it a yeah. standard SSD. Yeah. So, yeah. and it plugs in via the ex uh, USB port, or is there a special port? For no, it's a, there's a slot for it right in the console. Oh, okay. I must. I must. I must. I'm going to buy a terabyte. I can't really justify. My Xbox isn't plugged in. I'll show it to you. Oh, look at that! <laughs> it's uh, this thing. Oh, it's a special expansion port. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. probably it's there's it's your it's Xbox it's right there. So you, you know where it is. You just haven't plugged it in. <laughs> Why did you do that? Did For you how many months? Dust? I haven't used it in three months. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I, it's interesting that it's in reach, but it's still not plugged in. Yeah, Are you just, just tempting no, yourself now. Me. You know? So you haven't yeah. actually booted your Xbox in three months? To, to help me not like it, I put the clippy thing. Oh, can you see the little clippy guys <laughs> on there? He's saying, I thought you might want to play a game, but maybe yeah. not. Yeah. Xbox. I'm good. Thanks. Wow. Okay. Uh, that was tip one. Yes. And then the app pick, uh, Stardock today released uh, De Des Tape <laughs> Descapes 11. This is mm. just the new version of their dynamic wallpaper utility. It's only $3.99, works on Windows 10 and 11, allows you to have uh, basically animated dynamic backgrounds. So it could be a video, an animated image, or a static image that you can apply animated effects to. So mm. uh, not one of the major <laughs> Stardock utilities, but... You know, if people like to personalize their desktop or whatever. How is it with different resolutions? I would never put this on my computer, Richard. Why would I know that? Okay. <laughs> you know, I was, I was thinking about that perfect video I have um, of a sunset. Yeah, yeah. And I'm putting that as a background. Right. Uh, so yeah. it, does it, this is what, this is really Apple, uh, you know, the Apple TV started this. Oh, but, but this, it, but, is, your, well, no, this so, is not your screensaver. It's a desktop. No, it's on your desktop. So uh, uh, Windows well, that's going to have... kill performance, isn't it? Well, but we have GPUs and stuff now, you know. Yeah. So, a million years ago, when Windows 95 was still a thing, I was walking through Best Buy, and I walked by the row, that uh, the aisle that had the row of all the computers with the, remember Windows 95 had that cloud desktop? Yeah. And there was a there was a moment where I thought the clouds were moving on one of the computers, and I stopped, and I looked back, and it wasn't. I just invented it with my brain or whatever, but... <laughs> 
at that moment, I thought, you know, oh, actually, cool. a, kind of an animated background might yeah. be kind of interesting. Yeah. And then they did it in Windows Vista. I think it might have been part of Ultimate Extras, but it was called, was it called Dreamscape? Hmm. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Uh, it was something like that. And it just didn't really take off, you know. Was, yeah. So, I haven't used Object Desktop in a long time. Dream love, Scene. It was called Dream, Dream scene. scene. I love Starduck and I love Object Desktop. Yes. And I love Brad Sams, who is now there. Yep. Yep. I don't think Brad's listening. So I'm going to just say, yep. in the, back in the day when I used uh, Object Desktop, it would make my machine less reliable. Stable. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is that still the case? So, well, so the problem with that kind of thing is it, it, it has to have some way to reach into Windows to do that work and have that make sense, right? I mean, it's this is not an... This is not something Microsoft documents. Right. Like they don't want people replacing the UI. Right. So um, I don't use that kind of thing myself. You know, you get it. You know, my case is kind of special because. Well, you don't want I'm always it writing books and documenting thing. And I can't. Yeah, yeah I got to yeah. have. I have to do. I have to be stuck. You know? normal so, for you. Yeah. Um, so I can't really try this stuff uh, mm. other than to look at it or whatever. Um, I will say <laughs> whatever it's worth with Deskscapes. Um, I had to drag this out of Brad today. He never, he never came to me and offered it. He never uh, said anything about it. And I was like, Hey, what's going on with this thing? He's like, Oh yeah, it's just a minor, you know, we're doing this today. And I was like, okay, so <laughs> send it to me. So he's can, not a good marketer, is he? You know, no. well, I th he probably is, but he doesn't, he, he doesn't, he actually doesn't abuse our friendship. Yeah, that's the way to put good it for him. Yeah. And um, yeah, so Exploit people, me, please. Yeah. Well, people yeah. sometimes like I'll, I'll write like I'll, a new version of Star 11, you know, one of the big ones, like Star 11 big, right? Groupies big, right? So I'll write this up and it's like, oh, is you colluding with your friend at Stardock? And it's like, I've been writing about this for years and it's nothing yeah, to do with uh, it. Me too. I've been recommending you know, it for years, but I, yeah, but I'm he kind of a purist. I don't want to install a lot of background yeah. stuff. Yeah, that right. Actually, before I got before I started that storage, it's funny you say that my my tip today was going to be about using Task Manager to get rid of stuff running at startup. <laughs> and uh, I think a lot of people don't know that this is happening. But what they but even those that do know might not sort of think that much. Um, you need to look at that over time because <laughs> stuff keeps getting added to it. Yeah. And uh, I, I used this tip on hands on Windows the other day, so you'll see that in July or something. But you know, if you're not going to use Microsoft Edge, for example. Um, and you're going to use a different web browser, um, be sure to go into there and, and stop MS Edge from running automatically when your computer starts. There's absolutely no reason for that to be running in the background. You know, you know that's one thing Apple does well, and Microsoft could probably do, which is anytime anything installs a startup yeah, background pops something process, up and say, it says this is more, yeah. you know, going to be a background process. Yeah, You know why they don't do it? Because most of them are from Microsoft. <laughs> so they're actually the biggest. I'm going to bet that, that uh, yeah. Apple does not pop that up for anything Apple does. It's only for go. third parties. I'm I'm yeah. almost yeah. certain. That could be. That could yeah. Be. Mm -hmm. a lot of, so, for example, if you run the Xbox app uh, on purpose or by mistake, that thing will start up all the time going yeah. forward. That's part of your. Yeah, I really, run. that really bugs me. Yep, I don't like that kind of thing. And you can uninstall it, and it's still going to run. Well, you can get it out of it, but that's my point. Is you should go into Task Manager has a startup apps yeah. view. Um, you should go into there every month or so. Just look. You can sort it by what's enabled and yeah, what's not enabled. See what's enabled. creeped into your machine. Yep. Uh, and I, I, I don't think a month goes by where I don't see something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fair that's enough. Very good advice. So I guess you got two tips today, guys. Yeah. Thank you for the double tipper. <laughs> double the tips. What's coming up in uh, Run as Radio? Mr. Richard, uh, I I hinted about the show last week because it's it's one of the killer shows. I mean, Sammy Leho is one of my favorite security guys. He's all, always has the ability to scare the snot out of me. He's worked on some extraordinary problems over the year, but that was not the show we did. This one was a conversation about updating servers. So the big point that Sammy made was that uh, the primary vector for malware today is unpatched servers. It's no longer phishing. So MFA has been successful enough at impairing phishing as a strategy for propagating malware that now it's up, it's it's server updates. And it's, what's the problem with server updates? Well, once in a while, certain vendors push out updates that cause problems. And so most IT shops take their time with updates. They evaluate them. They run them in a test environment. You don't work on them all the time. And the issue now is that it's taking long enough to get all those updates that you're seeing exploits take advantage of those servers not being updated. And so the conversation we ended up having was about what's the higher risk, an unpatched server being 
exploited versus a patch server disrupting work. I mean, either way you have a work disruption, it's just one is much easier to fix than the other. The episode 886 mm. comes out today. Yep, Sammy today. Leho. Sammy Leho. All right. I'm ready. Green, ready? brown, liquor. Green, brown, liquor. We're talking about green spot today. And I've already done the whole segment on Irish whiskey and we had some fun with it. But I left off a part. And as I dug into green spot, and we'll find out why later, I realized that I'd forgotten to talk about how bonding worked in Ireland because it doesn't work. It never worked that way anywhere else. And it doesn't work that way in Ireland anymore. But Green Spot is made by a group called Mitchell and Sons. And Mitchell and Sons goes back literally 200 years. Wow. The Mitchells were quite prolific, you know, Catholicism. Uh, they love naming their eldest sons Robert. There's multiple generations like that. So there's a lot of Robert Mitchells running around. But they're not. We're whiskey makers. They had a bakery and tea house in Dublin. Oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> now, tea houses back in the day also served wine. And now yeah. we get to the real point, which was because they were buying a lot of wine, they had wine barrels. Uh, and so they got, uh, by 1887, they got into whiskey bonding. So whiskey bonding in Ireland was when you brought the barrel to the distillery and they filled it with new make. And then you store the barrel under bond, which means the duties aren't paid until you open the barrel. And so you have to make a deal with the government. You allocate a space to the with the with the, the bonding holding area. There, all of the barrels are labeled, and you pay a fee when you open the barrel. Hmm. And so Mitchell and Sons bought new make from Jameson, and they would put it into their wine casks that they were getting because they ran a tea house. And then, as they as the barrels aged and they became they tasted good. If they had been aged seven years, they would mark the barrel with a blue spot if it was good at 10 years they'd mark it with a green spot and if it was uh 12 years they marked it with a yellow spot and it was 15 years they marked it with a red spot that's where the names come from primarily they were buying both wine and fortified wine which we now know is like sherry and port and so those are very good things for aging new make in and so they made pretty nice whiskeys that people really liked but they never distilled their own whiskey and they're not the only ones. I talked about red breasts in the Irish segment as well. Um, Gimli never made their own whiskey. They bought uh, Jameson new make and barreled it themselves. Now, if you remember the 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 Irish story, I mean, this is uh, this is Mitchell and Sons doing very well selling their spot their spot whiskeys. Uh, but by the mid nineteen sixties, when whiskey sales are at their lowest point, is when Jameson just merges with Cork Distillers and becomes. The Irish Distillers Group, and they consolidate these distilleries. They shut down their old distilleries, and they build a new one called the New Middleton Distillery, uh, which was in operation by uh, seventy one, full swing in seventy five. And that was also the point where they said, "We're no longer going to allow external bonding." And the reason was that the part of the reason they believe that whiskey had fallen out of favor is that these bonding shops were cheating. You never knew what you were going to get. Yeah, you have to pay the duty once you open the barrel, but nobody really knows what you do with the barrel after that. Mm. So if you're adding more new make to it or you're cutting it with something else, like that became problematic as to what you're actually making. And I never, would never accuse the spot whiskeys of doing this, but there were many bonders back in the day. And so the unreliability of whiskey was part of the problem. And if you recall, when we were talking about why does Scottish whiskey ascend, it's because they got very good at making consistent, reliable product. And this is what the Irish were struggling with. And in this early 70s, the Irish just always tried to correct this. Now, there was a big outcry because there were some very good folks like Gimli and Mitchell and Sons who made excellent whiskey. But their ultimate solution was to say, okay, we'll do the barreling now at the distillery because at this point you're not buying wine in barrels anymore anyway so the barrels are becoming a problem so the barrels will now live at the distillery but we have an exclusive license to that and that's how it works to this day mitchell and sons still sells spot whiskeys but they provide barrels the barreling is done at the new middleton distillery it's aged there it's bottled there and then they exclusively sell it so it's a very different business model and i'm I was somewhat remiss when I did the Irish part, the conversation about this, where I just said, hey, 
uh, Irish distillers bought up all these brands. They didn't. They created licensing agreements around them. And so it operates in a, in a somewhat different style where Mitchell & Sons is a sole distributor, but also has direct influence over it. Because the other thing that uh, Mitchell & Sons does is they have closer relationships with certain wineries that go back for a century or more. Uh, wineries like uh, Leoville Barton. My favorite. Out of Barto, <laughs> Lovely wine. I love Leoville. And, <laughs> and generally speaking, you don't see these very often, but they still make additions of green spot that finish in wine casks. So the, a normal production of green spot splits a given malting, really the new make from Jameson, into bourbon and sherry casks. And then after a certain period of time, they combine them and will do a finishing stage for a couple of years in a wine cask. And Leo Barton is one of them. And that's a Bordeaux. Uh, they also work with Chateau Montalana, which is Zinfandel. And the reason I brought this up is this year they started making addition, an addition based on an Okanagan distiller uh, winery called Quailsgate. Ah. And so they do a two-year finish in Quailsgate Pinot Noir barrels to make a fairly distinct version of green spot. And so traditional green spot, which doesn't have a, used to have a 10 on it. It used to be a 10 year. You'll notice that the current modern green spot, which is about $50 US does not have an age appellation on it. It's because it's actually a combination of seven and 10 year old. And they don't want to put a seven on it because people don't like that number. Um, there are special <laughs> edition number. green spots. <laughs> yeah. There are special right. edition green spots that are 10 years old and you'll see the number on them when it's only 10. Um, but the, these wine finished versions go back to the original Mitchell and sons versions of their whiskeys by adding this finishing step in wine cast. It makes it kind of special. And the fact that one of them is a Canadian one, I think is very cool, except that it's only available in Canada. So it's interesting because it sounds like uh, the a barrel and the aging is more critical to the quality and flavor of the whiskey than the actual distilling of it. Or is that well, not for the, the case? most part? That's true because you always, you know, it's a clear, it's a clear out spirit when it comes out of the yeah, still. Yeah. Now, and there's lots of conversations about the role of the mash bill, the different grains, and the style of distillation. And as we know with Irish, that's they do almost anything. They use the coffee still. They'll do finish in pot stills. Uh, famously, um, Jameson is pot distilled, and so all of the spot whiskeys are pot distilled as well. Very similar to the uh, the Scottish style, but the distilling definitely is more flexible and how high you distill it to. And then what you cut it down to before you barrel, it has a lot to do with the effects. In the end, this alcohol is a solvent and yeah. you're using that solvent to yeah. extract flavors from oak. Good. I get it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the different barrels all play a role because bourbon barrels are only ever used once by American bourbon, they're relatively inexpensive and they're very plentiful. And because bourbon distillers put their bourbon into barrels at 62.5 degree percent ABV, typically the whiskey distiller puts it in at 64.5. So they're pulling a little, they're pulling a little harder on the wood as well as extracting some of those bourbon flavors. Yeah. Um, sherry casking come in even lower. And so the uh, extraction levels are higher. They pull more flavor that way. Straight wine cask whiskeys are very rare because the alcohol levels are so low in the wood. Long aging in them isn't good, which is why you see them typically being used as finishing casks one or two years at most. And often the first fill with whiskey isn't the best version of that. Yeah. It's subsequent uses of those casts that make the most flavorful whiskeys. So it's a complicated game. But those mixed barrelings are also an ability to make a consistent flavor. That by having a choice of barrels all with different flavors in them, you get to the flavor profile that your customer is expecting. That's really the art of modern whiskey is to get to those consistent flavors. Very interesting. Yeah. So all of those wine variants are about $100. Uh, if you can find them both, uh, the Louis, I, I looked up Leo Barton and Chateau Montalana uh, on Total Wines, and I could find them for about 100 bucks. The regular green spot's 50 Unfortunately, the Quail's Gate, it looks like it's British Columbia only. It's Even the Ontario, whiskey board, or Ontario Liquor Board doesn't have any. So you got to come up here if you want one.
<laughs> we uh, we have quite a bit of the uh, Leoville or Leoville uh, Barton uh, as the, as the <laughs> Bordeaux, <laughs> the the wine. Bordeaux. Yeah, we like the Bordeaux. Yeah. And some so you them, might want to grab the green spot of it because a great what yeah. a great way to finish a meal. Drink yeah. a little Leo Bordeaux at, the, yeah. at dinner and then yeah. finish with the whiskey. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Richard Campbell. Always love the brown liquor, a.k.a. green liquor spot on the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, you'll find Richard at runasradio.com. That's where the Run As Radio podcast uh, and the Dot Not Rock podcasts live. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, he's here every Wednesday, except for next Wednesday, when he's going to be out there with a big fish in Montana. <laughs> with me worn one. Yeah. Oh, uh, big boy. fish he doesn't want to eat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Tastes like mud. The... Well, you know, it's because they're sifting mud for nymphs. They sift mud for nymphs. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say the mud isn't the problem. It's the nymphs. But, uh, you know, mm. that's just me. But Mr. it's also how we fish them, too. You use a nymph rig, which yeah, is a sinking sure. rig, yeah. to pull them up. Put them in the mud. But when the, when the, but when the drakes are breeding, then you use a, a drake fly and you pull them off the surface. What and is, they taste much better. What is happening? When the drakes <laughs> are breeding... When the drakes are breaking. The very first the person fly. I go to is Paul Thorot. Thorot.com. <laughs> T-H-U-R-R-O double good dot com. Uh, become a wow. premium member. Get all the great stuff he writes. It's really, uh, you do such a good job. And of course, uh, his books, don't forget, are at leanpub.com, including the field guide to Windows 11. Now with Windows 10 inside. And just like a... Just like a uh, engine block mailbox. Yeah. You just like stuck. A, like a virus of some kind. Windows <laughs> 10 right in there. And the new one, uh, Windows Everywhere, which uh, is all about uh, the, the history of Windows through its uh, languages and development. Really good yeah. stuff. Paul, thank you. Richard, thank, thank you. you. Paul, it's just you and me next week, unless you want to bring in wow. somebody. We should call Mary Jo. Every okay. time uh, I ask her, she says no. Right. <laughs> So well, you'll be happy to hear she also says no to me, but <laughs> I'll, uh, you might I'll see what I can do. Be kind of fun. Anyway, yeah. we'll be back here. We do the show every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time, 1800 <laughs> UTC. Uh, you don't have to watch us live, but if you feel like that, you, we stream the live uh, production of the show, audio and video, as we do with all, almost all our shows at uh, live.twit.tv. If you're watching live, chat live in our IRC, open to all. All you need is a browser at IRC. Dot twit dot TV. If you are a member of Club Twit, of course, the Club Twit Discord is open to you, and there is great stuff happening. This for uh, Thursday, tomorrow, uh, in the Club Twit Discord, Stacy's Book Club, at 9 a.m., she's doing, I think, a, a, what I've heard is a very good sci-fi book from Annalie Newitz. I interviewed her on her hmm. uh, last book. It's called uh, The Terraformers, the new one. And, big deal, uh, we're going to have Hugh Howey on Tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, the author of the Silo series. So uh, even if you have, haven't read the book, if you've watched the Apple TV Plus series, which is quite good, it ends tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Uh, Hugh Howey in in a conversation with Aunt Pruitt in the uh, Club Twit stage tomorrow at 1 p.m. We're doing more Club Twit stuff. Paul does a Club Twit show, Hands on Windows. We have Hands on Macintosh with Micah Sargent. Scott, Scott Wilkinson has brought back home theater geeks for our club members. Uh, when we started the club two years ago, we said, look, our shows that are free are going to maintain, uh, will, will always be free, but they're, you know, with podcast advertising, uh, dwindling with audiences shrinking more and more, we're dependent on the club. And so it makes it possible for us to continue to launch new shows. So Jason Howell will be launching an uh, uh, AI show yesterday. He had a kind of a round table discussion with uh, club members about what might be in that AI show. Uh, keep watching for that if you're in the club. If you're not, get ad-free versions of all of our shows, special shows we don't put out anywhere else, like the uh, upcoming AI show, um, and access to the Club Twit Discord. Seven bucks a month. That's nothing. That's less than one one glass of green spot. Seven <laughs> bucks a month. Just just go to twit.tv slash club twit and, and feel good knowing you're supporting uh, what we do. If you want to see Twit continue... Uh, join the club, twit.tv slash club twit. Uh, after the fact, you can get on-demand versions for free because they're ad-supported at twit.tv slash www. There's a YouTube channel also ad-supported uh, where you can watch the show. And probably the best thing to do, club member or not, is subscribe in your favorite podcast player. That way you'll get it and you'll have it and you'll know whenever you're in the mood, you can hear Windows Weekly. Thank you, Paul. 
Have a great time in Montana, Richard. We'll see you in a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. Have a great 4th of July, Paul. Thank you. you Coming too. Tuesday, and we will see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. Hey there, I'm Micah Sargent. Look, as a geek myself, I feel it's only fair if I admit something. We can be kind of hard to shop for. So what do you get for that geek in your life who has everything already? Well, a Club Twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news podcasts available. With a Club Twit subscription, they're going to get access to all of our podcasts ad-free, exclusive outtakes, behind the scenes and special content, and I love this, exclusive shows like my own Hands on Mac and Hands on Windows from Paul Therott, as well as the Untitled Linux Show. So purchase your geek's gift at twit.tv slash clubtwit, and they will thank you every day.